shit. All right. <clears throat> oh my god. We're here. We're doing it. We're live. Uh I am not fully awake. <laughs> when am I ever fully awake for these? So, we're back. My voice just cracked. It's okay. I'm an adult. <laughs> we're back with more Corpse Party. Book of Shadows, finally. Haven't been able to touch this for a while. Because my schedule's just been all over the goddamn place. Now has it. Stop playing the intro. I don't want you to play the intro. Stop it. How dare you. Let me just make sure that it's not too loud, hopefully. Audio mixing in this game is a little... a little weird. Because the music tends to be, like, the loudest thing. I think I'm gonna lower it by, like, two decimals. Should be fine. Alright. Let's see if I remember the quick controls. We have our continue. Which, I'm not sure if that's just going to throw me straight into, like, a chapter. It shouldn't. Load games. Quick saves. Ooh. I'm going to go back, actually. Because I know last time we stopped, we stopped the... Uh, we stopped right after a chapter. We were moving on. So I guess new chapter, right? We didn't... No, we did, uh, we didn't do Encounter, did we? Did we do Encounter? You know what, let's, let me actually check. Load game. No, I don't, no, we didn't do Encounter, okay. Thought we did. Really? Oh, we did the third chapter. Alright. Damn. So I got more to do than I thought it would. So, okay. Okay. I guess... Hopefully we have enough time tonight to attack uh, two chapters out the way. Right? Because... <laughs> because I haven't been able to come back to this in a while. I feel like, uh... I feel like I've been here forever. And we need to get a move on, so we can play the other Corpse Party games. Alright, well let's go into Encounter. Who's our main character that will end up dying this time? Oh my god, we're playing as Satoshi. This is going to be interesting, he's going to see some people die today. Let's see, Tenji 5, hmm. Is that a 23 or is it a 33? Ah, <sighs> Mr. Yamazaki's handwriting is atrocious. This really wasn't my day. I knocked over my alarm clock this morning, and of course it stopped working. Oh man, I know how that feels. Also, this time I wasn't super late for my own stream. The very last pork sandwich sold out right before my eyes during lunch. I don't think I can eat a pork sandwich. I don't even like, I don't even eat like ham cold cuts that much. I guess it was pulled pork, and then maybe. And I was roped into a favor when I happened upon my homeroom teacher, Mr. Yamazaki, long after that school day had ended. So now, like it or not, I was on my way to deliver some notes to Miss Yui, our homeroom TA, who was out sick with a cold. I'll have to make sure I apologize to Yuka later. I know how disappointed she'll be that I'm missing our shopping date. Hmm. Tenji 523, number 11. Found it. As long as this doesn't actually read 633 number 77 anyways. I stopped and compared the memo in my hand with the apartment building in front of me. It was two stories tall and looked a little on the shabby side. Not too shabby. Probably about 20 years old. It didn't seem very solid, nor is practically stylish or cheek. It was completely unremarkable structure in every way. Apartment 207, or is that 201? I was really getting fed up with this handwriting, and from a teacher, no less. In any case, it seems certain that apartments was on the second floor, 
So I trug so I trudged up the eh, so I trudged up the starting startlingly what? Startlingly narrow okay. Startlingly narrow steep stairs. I can't say that word. Ugh. The metal staircase was throughout was ugh, throughout was through was thoroughly blocked with patches of rust. Blotched. There goes my my reading abilities. <laughs> What would someone live in such a rundown apartment building? Are teacher salaries really that low? <laughs> oh, Satoshi, you have, you have no idea, buddy. I felt a little sorry for her, but in a way, this place kind of fit her personality. With that through my mind, I turned my attention towards apartment 201. We're here, 201. Hmm. Yeah, this doesn't look like Miss Yui's place. The door play for the floor nearest the st uh, nearest stairs had a name I didn't recognize scribbled on it. Guess that means we tried door number two. Passing room 201, I continued down the narrow walkway towards the end. Wandering alone around an apartment building I'd never been before made me feel kind of nervous. It wasn't like I was going to do anything wrong, but my back still tensed up as I maneuvered around and piled... We maneuvered around piled up strollers, plastic toys, and bundles of newspapers. And then finally, I arrived at the last door. Bingo. Bingo, bongo, bango. This was it. I breathed a sigh of release. The door plate for apartment 207 read, Satoshi. Wait, what? Shito Did I just say my own name? My bad. Shishido! For an adult's handwriting especially, the letters were rounded all over were rounded and overly cutesy. I mean, female samurai, right? This was Miss Yui's place, all right. Hmm, what's this? I leaned in and read something written in a small script on the corner of the door on the door plate. Beware of cat. Shouldn't that be beware of dog? <laughs> oh, you Japanese and your cat. Everyone has a cat, but not a dog. Dogs are too messy. That's Miss Yui for you. As for me, I have two dogs. <laughs> so how exactly does one beware of house cat? Is it even possible for a house cat to be threatening? Oh, you you don't own half of it. They will scratch the ever-living shit out of you. At any rate, I confirm beyond a shadow of a doubt that this was Miss Yui's place. So, my errand was nearing its end. What was Mr. Yamazaki thinking anyways? I understand taking handouts to sick classmates, but delivering class notes to the home of an absent teacher? That just seems weird. This isn't something a shouldn't a a sh <laughs> I meant to say student. This isn't something a student should be doing. He said he was busy with meetings though, and really needed one of his students to help him out. But was it really okay to entrust a school student with confidential class notes? Oh, Satoshi, that just means that he believes that you're just fucking plain as shit and you won't peep at them. Wouldn't it be kind of a problem if I were to read these? Yeah, but you won't. You won't do it, Satoshi. You're too much of a bitch. <laughs> My mind kept drafting from one question to another and I became acutely aware of the of the inherent value in these notes I held in my bag. But tempting as it was, I couldn't bring myself to look at them. I'm too much of a good guy. Mr. Yamazaki put his faith in me after all. And I was stronger than that. I couldn't let this get to the best of me. At any rate, I was here. I should have just been able to drop off the notes and be on my way. Putting all my doubts and misgivings aside, I rang the doorbell. And then I waited. And waited. And waited some more. But there was no answer. Huh? It didn't ring. It, it did ring, didn't it? Monsieur? I rang the bell again and also tried calling out. But there was still no response. What should I do? Maybe she's sleeping. I don't want to wake her, but I'm a little concerned. When we heard that Miss Yui was staying home sick today, we were all pretty disappointed. That way, part of me was actually a little happy that I was asked to run these over to her. Wait a minute. So, I'm gonna assume this is like... The first loop, maybe? Right? Well, I'm assuming everything we did was still within the first loop. But, um... 
was she even there in the beginning? When Satoshi warned everyone? She might just be staying home. She's just like, fuck it, I'm not going. She might just remember. That was part of me, uh, that's why part of me was actually a little happy that I was asked to run these over to her. I figured I'd be able to check in, see how she was doing, and let everyone at school know that she was feeling better. I don't know, Satoshi got the hots for teacher. It never occurred to me that I might not even be able to see her, though. Miss Yui? Miss Yui? Nothing, huh? Uh, Miss Yui? Hello? She was probably sleeping around at the doctor's or something. But what if she was hurt? I tried opening the mail slot to peek in. I thought maybe I could get a glimpse of the room inside, and then the cat's gonna scratch the shit out of him. Miss Yui. It felt kind of wrong peeking into someone's house without their permission. But I was legitimately worried about Miss Yui's health. So my... <clears throat> so my conscience was clear on this one. Oh, the cat. A well-groomed cat was facing the door and staring back at me. With its head tilted slightly to the side, it let out an adorable meow. This must be the cat I was instructed to beware. And since Monsieur was always going on and on about her little buddy, I was pretty sure I remember his name. Your... M How the fuck do I say that? <laughs> Morit? I guess. <laughs> Morit? That's such a... That's such a weird name. You're Morit, right? Or, no, it was Monit. Monit. There you go, that's better. Yeah, Monit. What a pretty kitty you are. Mishui talked about her cat a lot in class, so pretty much the whole school had heard from him. She even had some, some tins of cat food hidden on the shelf in the classroom, probably because she brought it too much and had no room for them in her apartment. Here, yeah, kitty kitty. Monit. Monit. Is Miss Yui home? If she's home, would you mind waking her up for me? That's a good kitty. <sighs> Didn't think that would work. My shoulders sank. I felt defeated. What the hell was I doing? I closed. I closed the mail slide and stood. Uh, and stood back up. Damn. I sure hope Miss Yui's all right. She's probably just out right right now or something. Which would mean the door's locked. I'm sure. Lost in the speculation, I placed my hand on a doorknob. And with a quick twist, I turned it and pushed the door, opening it easily. Huh? It wasn't locked? Crap, that's not good. I can't let Monik get out. Oh man, am I gonna... No. I'm just thinking of the worst right now. I might just like walk in and... Oh no. Don't tell me she's like... Dead on the ground. Ah, your master's pretty careless, huh? Leaving the door unlocked like that. Monet's whiskers twitch as I called out to him from the entranceway. What's that you say? She purr. What? She purr is. Oh my fucking god. Stop it, Satoshi. Don't do that. You can't do that. You have no right. <laughs> you and I are on the same page, Monet. Here I was, talking to a cat. Was this what I'd become? What should I do? I was feeling pretty uneasy. Not only had I peeped into someone's home, I walked in without a second thought. Moreover, this was where Miss Yui lived. Alone, in other words. A woman's apartment. Ooh. Scandalous, Satoshi, you little fucking perv. No matter how many times I remind myself that I was here on an errand, I couldn't help feel that I'm not the only... I'm not only uh, I not only crossed the line, but I leaped over it. Hey man, we all played Persona 5. You know where this leads. Take this route. <laughs> you should. Miss Yui. I tried calling her name one last time, but as expected, there was no answer. So what now? I was trying hard to avoid being too nosy, but my eyes inevitably began surveying the room. The apartment entrance let uh, let out a oh, wow. <clears throat> The apartment entrance led out immediately into the kitchen, and beyond that, there was a sliding door to some other room. I could see the light through the gaps. I strained my ear- I strained? What? I strained my ears. Okay, I guess. <laughs> I strained my ears, but there was nothing to hear. 
You say like you perked your ears up, I guess. I don't know. No signs of life whatsoever. Miss Yui really must have been out. One more time. I try calling out for her one more time. Just to put my corners at my my corners my concerns at ease, I felt like I've seen even more. Wow, even more uh, suspicious. Ah, can't read. I felt like I seem even more suspicious if I stayed silent. Miss Yui, it's Mo it's Mochita. Still nothing. Maybe she was asleep on the other side of that door. Let's just have a little look. See then. Wait, 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 wait. Shaking my head furiously, I cast out that sudden impulse. That was a terrible idea, pure and simple. Entering the apartment unannounced was bad enough, but walking the, all the way in, opening that sliding door and peeking inside, that was way too much. Man, if Miss Yui happened to come home and find me standing here, I'd be in pretty hot water. No, scratch that. I'd be in plentiful... <laughs> I'll be in a plentiful, dense, scalding water. Mine meowed as if in agreement. Panicking, I once again surveyed my surroundings. I almost felt like there were eyes on me, staring with disdain. But of course nobody was there. What the fuck was that noise? <laughs> oh no, she's dead. She's dead. She's already dead in her room. Also, there's a note there. Maybe you should check it. Oh, right, I can just leave a note. Oh, wait, is that me leaving a note? Wondering why I didn't think of this sooner, I dug into my bag for some paper and pen. Mr. Yamazaki asked me to come by. That should be enough, right? I'll just use some notebook paper. Let's see, Miss Yui. Crouching in the doorway, I ran my pen across the page. I brought class notes at Mr. Yamazaki's behest. Everyone has been worried about you. Hey, Ethanol, how's it going? Sorry about barging into your apartment. Please, don't forget to lock your door from now on. Hmm? As I was writing the note, I sensed a presence in front of me. Until just a moment ago, this house had no signs of human life in it. But now I could feel someone standing directly ahead. Standing and looking down at me. Huh? Fidgeting nervously, I put... Why the fuck did I say that word like that? Fidgeting nervously, I put down my pen. Raised my head slowly. Oh, get the fuck out of there. No, that's when you get up, you turn, and you say, not worth it. Not worth it. I'm done. <laughs> and saw a white, slender ankle. Oh, never mind. That's when you stay. That's when you stay and you say, yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> Shocked, I shot my head up and up in there, standing before me, was Miss Yui. Ah! Miss Yui. She was looking right at me, but she seemed she seemed decidedly out of sorts. Her hair looked dis dis oh god, I can't even say say the goddamn word. Remember when I played <laughs> Vampire the Masquerade? Yeah. I said that I was moving over to YouTube. I'm recording it on the side. I'm gonna upload it all at once, once I'm done. Because they, uh, for some reason, they got rid of one of the resolution options, I guess, and if I were to stream it, it would be at a low resolution. Unless, like, you know, if I put it at a higher resolution than that, it would cover the chat and I wouldn't be able to see it. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. Her hair looked disheveled, uh, disheveled. Her gaze was unst unsteady, and her pajamas were in a complete disarray. She was like a completely different person from the usual camped, uh, camped edit. Oh God, Ugh. can't say the word. Camped deductor. Oh, uh, we come to know and love. Ah, oh, Miss Yui, I'm so sorry I have entered your apartment without your permission. Here, I stood up frantically and held out the note I've been writing, but. Huh? I'm sure you were just standing there, stupefied, <laughs> stupefied, when a, with a completely vacant expression on her face. Mishui, I called out to her as gently as I could, but she was really dazed. She seemed almost like a ghost. 
officially advertise a pay position on official sword devs Discord for development of shit post mod for what? Really? What's the mod? Oh god. I'm getting like You know that feeling when like the back of your sinuses is like burning for some reason? That's what I'm getting right now. For no reason. Fucking hate that feeling. Oh my god. It sucks. Let me show you what happened to you. I had a sudden uneasy feeling. Worried I woke Worry, I walked up to Miss Yui, grabbed her shoulders, and tried to snap her out of it by shaking her. Maybe she's a sleepwalker. But instead... Ugh! This just seemed to make her cough. You okay? Hey, Miss Yui. These were wet, productive coughs. And spit was shooting out of Miss Yui's mouth with each one. I frantically tried to shield my face from the spray, but my reaction time just wasn't quick enough. Uh, I put my hand on her cheek and found it thick with slimy film of saliva. Oh, God. Are you okay, Miss Yui? Miss Yui hobbled back and forth, then fell to her knees with a thud. She had completely sprawled out in the, she had completely sprawled out in the hallway, mo moaning and groaning the whole time. Miss Yui, wiping the spatterings from my own face, I leaned over and took a better look at hers. It was bright red. Strain, uh, strained breathing, a stuffy nose, and visibly high fever on top of it all. She was sick as could be. I'm cold. Cold? But you're dripping with sweat! SDK for the game is unfortunately limited. I wanna do shit to alter the dialogue. Oh shit, really? Big so dancing world has a chance of spawning in the skybox any map you load. Whenever you load three copies of the hardest ball. Oh my god. You're just trying to break the game. <laughs> Wait, what? Make it so gunshots have a small chance to change to anime moans. Oh my god. <laughs> what? So you just fire your gun one time and you just hear, yeah, and you're like, oh, stop it. And then your dad walks in and he goes like, you winning, son? And you're like, yeah, dad, I am. See, it's a shooter. It's cold. I thought maybe her sweat had cooled her down, but then realizing her disheveled, uh, her disheveled pajamas certainly weren't doing any of her favors. With heart pounding a mile a minute and face red as a traffic light, I set about buttoning her up. The whole point of the mod is to be an absolute shit post. I mean, hey, I, I find it great if I, uh, I find it funny if my gun just fucking let it out a hentai moan every once in a while. I'll just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> just killing people and you just hear, yeah. <laughs> Miss Yui, you know who this is, right? It's Mochita from school. Hmm? If you're cold, you need to sleep under your covers. Otherwise, you won't get any better. She absentmindedly extended her shaking arms like a zombie, slowly reopened her eyes, and looked up at me. It was the gaze of a severely favorite, uh, favorite of mine. Miss Yui? Hmm. Uh, Suzukasa? What? Tsukasa? Who's that, your brother or something? <laughs> Gotta use the bathroom. That's alright. Miss Yui was clinging to me tightly. I couldn't move. I was frozen in shock. She began to weep. You come for me, Sukasa. Uh, who's Sukasa? What a lovely surprise. I'm so glad you're here. Mishuri, wait. You got the wrong person. It seemed like I wasn't getting through to her at all. And the sensation, and the sensation of her chest as she held me was making it virtually impossible to fight her grip. It was utterly, I was utterly powerless against this opponent. I, oh my god, even the sound effects. <laughs> I never realized before just how soft a woman's chest really was. So they don't feel like bags of sand. God, am I that weak-willed? I had to remind myself that Miss Yui had me confused with someone else. Mustering all the strength I could, I gripped her arms and tried to pry them off of me. But she was a lot stronger than I anticipated and wouldn't let me get away. 
I was so scared, Sakasa. I was so scared. Scared? I never thought you'd actually come. Fostered yells. <laughs> as she squeezed me tightly, I felt as though my upper body might collapse under the pressure of hers, of her softest parts. I was blushing uncontrollably. Oh yeah? That makes two of us. Miss Yui, please let me go. No, I won't. Come on, Miss Yui. Get off me. I struggled to wriggle free, but Miss Yui only grabbed me tighter. Our bodies were getting more and more intertwined. And every time I squirmed, Miss Yui would just pull me in even closer. Sakasa, huh? As her chest rose and fell er erratically, droplets of sweat slid down into her cleavage. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, very descript. You know what? I forgot how descriptive Chorus Party like to be from time to time, you know? Just, just good, have, have an all at it. I could feel the heat of her fever radiating off of her steadily encro encroaching face, as well as the shoulders I grabbed in an effort to push away. Stay here with me, Sukasa, please. I'm telling you, you got the wrong person. Questions were swirling around in my head. Why was Miss Yui crying? And who is this Sukasa person? But I was most concerned for the state of her pajamas, which had become even more disheveled during our struggle. Miss Yui, your pajamas, your pants. Hmm? They're sliding down. Sukasa, you're so warm. Miss Yui, please. Realizing that's not a, not a single word was getting through to her, I sighed, res I sighed resigningly. I'd taken care of Yuka and a number of times when she caught a cold and draw a fe and draw on a fever, but I don't recall it ever getting this bad. Miss Yui was actually calm, collected, and rational. <laughs> who would who would have ever imagined that a fever could leave her so thoroughly discombobulated? Oh my God, I'm trying to grab my composure here, reading this shit. Miss Yui, seriously, pull yourself together. I put my strength into my resistance, and finally her arms relaxed just the tiniest bit. But her expression changed drastically. No, no, please. <laughs> Miss Yui, I'm Satoshi Mochita. Not this suit. Please don't go, please. Miss Yui was acting like a spoiled child. Slipping out of, sh <laughs> slipping out of the shoes I still had been wearing, I again drew close to her sprawled out form. There was no way I could just leave her here like this. I sure hope no, none of this seems too sketchy after your fever breaks. Miss Yui let out a lethargic groan, perhaps in response to my quiet murmurings. At my wits end, I grabbed hold of her and I did my best to carry her to the back of the room. Gently willing, gently willing over her. I can't, I can't read this shit. Gently willing her over to her unfurled, uh, unfurled. I can't even say the fucking word. Unfurled futon. I then carefully laid her down, making sure I didn't drop her in the process. Then there was the matter of of rebuttoning those pesky pajamas again. I hesitantly pulled up her pajama bottoms and brushed away the stray hairs that were plastered to her brow sweat. I'd done my best to avoid seeing anything I shouldn't, but I'm a guy, so my heart was pounding the whole time. Mishui's pajamas were soaked through with sweat. Oh god. Oh, that just oh that bothers me so much. She really might have been better off with the change of clothes altogether. But no, that would have been that would have been going too far. Wish I could find a towel or something so I can at least wipe some of that moisture away. Oh, it's moist. Ugh. Ugh. He had to say moisture. Moist. Noticing a convenience store bag carelessly tossed to the floor, I glanced inside. Hey, she already bought cold packs. Why... why wasn't she using them? Jeez. Miss Shui, this might be a little cold, but bear with me, okay? Didn't she say she was cold? Wouldn't it be better to put, like, maybe a heat pack? Eh, I guess not. I guess it would be better. Maybe she just feel cold internally, but not like externally. All right, I think that helped. I placed one of my, placed one of the, com oh god, I can't say the fucking words. I placed one of the compresses on her forehead and pulled the covers from over. Miss Yui appeared all intent, 
all instead. Oh, God. I'm gonna take a drink of my water. I need to. I'm dying here. But she appeared al almost intensely relieved. She, exha she exhaled contentedly, and her breathing seemed more relaxed. Finally, she was asleep. Even in sleep, Mishui seemed to be suffering. Oh, Monet, were you worried about your master? I don't blame you. When Mr. Yamazaki said she was sick, I had no idea it would be this bad. Mata had coiled up in my legs without me noticing. I began absentmindedly speaking to him. He meowed in response, and our conversation ended there, as my gaze was still fixed squarely on Miss Yui. So, what to do now? Oh, um, Miss Yui? Are you okay to be alone right now? She wasn't in any condition to respond, but Miss Yui... Mishui's hand had slipped from under the futon and was gently grasping my pants leg. Hey! Her grip was much weaker than before. But I knew I'd probably regret it if I went home now. Man, I'd fucking regret it if you went home now. You stay there, you son of a bitch. I play Persona 5. It's the teacher route. <laughs> Mishui just seemed really lonely. I mean, she's only, what, three years older than you? Well, I guess, I, I guess I'll settle in then. Without disturbing Miss Yui's hold on me, I took a seat beside her. For the time being, I figured I'd watch over her and make sure her condition didn't worsen. Occasionally, Miss Yui's breathing would become rigid. She furrowed her brow. She was in a pretty bad way. Poor thing. Wasn't there anything else I could do? I glanced quietly down to the hallway. I noticed when I carried Miss Yui out here that the kitchen near the entrance was perfectly neat and tidy. There wasn't any in in indica uh, indication it had been used that day at all. I wonder if she's eaten anything. Monet gaze shifted suddenly. I followed it and saw pebbles laid out in the corner of the room. One dish was filled to the brim with water, and the other was piled high with dry cat food. I see someone's eating well around here, huh? Even even delirious with fever, she's still taking really good care of you. But that's not good, Mishui. You shouldn't be thinking about your own you should be thinking about your own meals first. Eh. I mean, cat gotta eat, right? Look at that cat. That cat gotta eat. That cat looks a lot like a ferret right now. <laughs> Shook my head at the whole situation, then glanced down at Mane, who was tilting his head as if trying to understand me. I broke into a wry smile. When I pulled out the cold packs, I didn't notice some cheap convenience store food in the bag as well. I guess that, I guess that was going to be her food for the day. Not exactly the best stuff to eat when you're sick. There's rice and eggs, at least. Maybe I'll make egg porridge or something. Miss Yui, may I borrow your kitchen? Her face was bright red and her half- Pained, half contended note, half contended noises provided me with no clear cut answer to my question. I don't think I'm gonna get much out of her. How about you, Monet? Do I have your permission to use the kitchen? Excellent. Thank you. Monet cries helped helped assuage my guilt over entering a woman's apartment and borrowing her kitchen. Not that I had any reason to feel guilty. I don't think any. I don't think anyways. I mean, circumstances. Were, were what they were. Still, I had this nagging sense that I, sh that I shouldn't somehow felt bad about what I was doing. Excuse me, please, Miss Yui. I'm gonna need to get up. One by one, I gently peeled off each of the fingers lashed onto my pants leg. The expression of her face changed as I was doing, uh, as I was doing so, from contented rest to mild annoyance, but there was nothing to indicate that she might wake up. All right then, let's see what we can do, shall we? As I stood up, Monet meowed happily and began tagging along at my heels. The Miss Yui, now resting by herself in the bedroom, let out a sudden sneeze. Book of Shadows, Episode 3, The Encounter. Yeah. 
Come on, Yui. Gross. I just I just got sprayed. Sorry. I've got a real I got a real tingle in my nose today for some reason. Uh, honestly. Tissues, tissues. Huh. Where'd I put them? Oh wow. Did I get that much on you? Here, use one of mine. It's the least I can do. Great. Don't mind if I do. What? She was talking to me. May I have one too, please? Let's see. Here we go. Thanks. You guys really should keep extras with you, you know? <laughs> well, sorry. Honestly. Heh. <laughs> so, what are we talking about again? You remember? We're talking about what it's like to be seniors now. Oh, I know, right? Can it really just be one more year before we graduate? While graduation is important, don't forget there's life afterwards to think about as well. Hmm? Our careers. No, I really don't want to think about, uh, think about that. Well, there is a reason we've been subject to all those career counseling sessions, and it's because our futures are just big question marks right now. No kidding. What are we going to do with our lives? It's scary. Any ideas, Yui? You have any plans for the future? Actually, I got it all figured out. What? Well, don't leave us hanging. Out with it, girl. Well... My name is Yui Shishido. I'm 17 and my dream is to be a teacher. I'll, I'll never understand that dream. I mean, I guess, but teachers are so fucking underappreciated. <laughs> I butt into the lives of others without a second thought, and I spend most of my time doing nothing important. But I believe that even someone like me can make her dreams come true, with enough hard work. Kisaragi Academy, five years ago. The cherry blossoms were in bloom and the rustling wind carried with the soft warmth of the, of the season. I was a high school senior now, and I was devoting myself to my studies in, in a preparation for the day my dream could come a reality. Job was posted, but probably not going to get any responses till tomorrow. Alright. Hell. At least you at least you see that something that you want. <laughs> and that dream was and that dream was to become an English teacher. My grades on the on the ugh. Eh can't read. My grades were on the fence for getting into the university I wanted though. So my best bet was to score a special recommendation from the academy. Will I play my when I play the shit pump moss? Uh, once I beat the game, maybe. If I have free time. Because, honestly, I don't have that much free time at all, ever. That's why I miss half my streams. <laughs> That's why I always stream, like, late. Phew. That was a lucky break. When I got called out to the office, I had no clues. I would definitely like to check out the mod, though. Let alone just to see my gun go stupid. I had no clue what it might be about. After school one day, I was summoned to the teacher's staff room. I was freaking out that maybe I failed and my grades weren't good enough for the school I wanted to go to, or something terrible like that. But it turned out my fears were all for naught. You have no rival in our academy, they said, so if you keep working hard, we'll be happy to give you a recommendation. Damn, that just goes to show you that no one wants to be a fucking English teacher. <laughs> Man, was that ever a pick-me-up? I feel like I could take on the world now. I'm gonna have to make sure I don't let this chance slip by me. So, uh, this trash can. Why exactly is it so ridiculously heavy again? Carrying this beast to the dumpster is gonna be the death of me. Who the fuck? <laughs> Who are you? Hmm? I turned around, still holding the garbage can. The voice belonged to a male student I've never spoken with before. I s I've seen him around a lot, though. His name was... Oh... I guess she had, like, a, her high school crush. Tsukasa Mikune, from Class 7. Watch your step. There's a root sticking out on the ground here, and it's pretty easy to trip on. Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> she fucking completely ate shit. Ow. Hey, what's the big, what's the big idea laughing at someone else's misfortune? I mean, it's funny, right? <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> It's not funny. Shouldn't you be asking me if I'm okay or something? Nah, that shit was hilarious. 
You fucking ate shit. My bad, my bad. Oh, you don't have to help clean up. They'll get your hands dirty. Don't worry about it. It's the least I can do after laughing like that. I mean, to be fair, he did warn you, and you still tripped. Thanks. No prob. That should be everything, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Cool. Let's go, then. Huh? I remember it well, even now. This was my first time talking with Tsukasa, and he left a strong first impression on me. That's really kind of you. Isn't it heavy, though? Not especially. I'm the one signed to take it. Maybe I should... It's fine. Really. There. Everything is in its place. Thank you so much. You are a huge help. Catch you around. Hey, hold up. Hmm? I feel like I should do something nice for you in return. Don't worry about it. Your thanks is plenty. Oh, look at this. Look at this man in fucking white shining armor. <laughs> this anime protagonist. Look. Just wait there a second, okay? Hmm? Making a new friend is always great, but when it happens to be Sukasa Mikune, it's all the better. He's kind of been on my mind for a while. There we go. Most of the times I've seen Sukasa before this were in the school courtyard. He spent a lot of time there sitting alone on the bench. Even after school or during summer vacation, if I happened to pass by, I would always see him there. And after this little encounter, we go on to make many fond memories together. Yet somehow, the image of Tsukasa that stands out most in my mind is of him seated alone on that courtyard bench. For you. I hope cafe... I hope what? Oh god, I can't... Cafe a lot... I... I'm not French, motherfucker. <laughs> Some shit. I'm guessing it's like maybe something from the vending machine, like coffee or something. Sure. I guess anything's fine, really. Thanks. You know... It's customary when receiving a gift to quietly accept it without any offhand remarks. Well, aren't we a stickler for tradition? <laughs> we walked to the bench together, sat down, and began making small talk. That courtyard bench was sort of a mystical place. The leaves rustled over your head, and if you closed your eyes and opened your ears, it felt as though you were in the middle of some forest. And then if you looked straight up, the sunlight poured in through the leaves, and you almost felt like you were in the in another world. This is the first time I ever actually sat on one of these benches. It's pretty nice here. Is it? It's lovely. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Oh, so is that why? Huh? Well, you come here an awful lot, right? Like even after school and during summer vacation. I sure do. So you must really like this place. Yeah, I guess I do. Well, then there we go. The leaves rustled as as a gentle breeze between uh, as a gentle breeze blew between us. We were both silent for a bit, but strangely, it didn't feel awkward or uncomfortable. So, aren't you gonna ask? Ask what? What I'm always doing here by myself or something. Hmm? You're always here because you like the spot, right? Well, yeah. Is there some other reason, then? Not really. So what would be the point of me asking? Well, you got me there. But people normally ask me if it's boring being here by myself, or tell, or tell me they don't get it, or say I'm a weirdo or something. Really? I don't know. I guess I just don't think of it that way. The way I see it, if you like it here, then why not come here whenever you can? Guess that makes you... <laughs> guess that makes you the weirdo, then. What?! Hey, don't make that face. Coming from me, that's a compliment. What? Calling someone a weirdo is supposed to be a compliment. It's the best compliment of all. Heh, <laughs> you bet it is. I'm not sure I buy that. You're really mean. The expression on Sukasa's face was a dead giveaway that he really enjoyed talking to me. And I've always loved the feeling I get when I know my words help brighten someone's day. I must have been sporting one hell of a goofy smile at the moment. <laughs> hmm? Actually, there's a place at this school that I like even more than here. Oh? Where's that? 
I'm not telling. What? It's my special place. Which means it must be a total I mean a totally eh, it must be a totally awesome place, right? Yep. Aw. I really want to see it. Come on. Why do I feel like My mind's just trying to like think about how the fuck does this guy rap into the story? I think he I'm not sure. You know what? No. I don't think it, I don't think it is what I thought. Thought maybe he might be like uh the guy who goes crazy, but I think that guy had a different name, right? Had a completely different name. Uh, I really want to see it. Come on. No way. I can't spill the beans that easy. Besides, the view there isn't nearly as consistent. Laughing, Sukasa finished up his drink and grabbed the empty, uh, the now empty trash. Uh, eh. The now empty trash can. He carried to the dumpster for me. Treated me to coffee, so put it was coffee. Got it. He treated me to coffee, so please allow me to take this to the classroom for you. What? Are you sure? You bet. Thanks. I'm in class. Really want to put it out so that. But let's see, shit, we have something live. Up. <laughs> I really hope Bloodlines 2 isn't shit. I really hope it's not. Because I had my eyes on Masquerade for like a long time and finally getting able to play it. I'm like, yeah, I definitely like this game. So if, uh. I really hope Bloodlines 2 isn't shit. It probably is gonna. It's most likely gonna be shit. We're probably gonna have like another. Not on as big of a scale, but. It's gonna be fucked up like. Like how uh, Cyberpunk was. It's gonna come out super buggy. I already feel it. I see it. Class 4, if I'm not mistaken. You're the famous Yui Shishido, after all. Huh? How did you. You're that girl who already looks like she could be a teacher. I don't think there's a student in any of our 12 classes who doesn't know your name. What? From then on, Tsukasa and I met in the courtyard many times. We didn't really talk in the halls, but something about this place spur uh, spurred our conversation. Hmm. Coffee again? Yep. Doesn't that get a little old? Not really. You drink at least two a day though, right? Hey, how you know that? Seen it with my own eyes. There's a perfect view of the vending machine from here, after all. There is? Yeah, I mean, it's right there. Oh wow, no kidding. Doesn't matter if- Doesn't matter if there's after school or summer break. Shishino buys cafe a latte. I- I guess that's how you say it. A latte? That's not even how you say latte. How- Latte is spelled different, isn't it? I'm not even gonna- Whatever. She buys coffee. She drinks coffee. I like coffee. Do you like coffee? Coffee's great. <laughs> it's like Old Faithful. You can set your watch by it. Well then, I guess, I guess we're even. Uh, well then, I guess we're even. Since I always see you sitting on this bench. What? You're back at that again? Sure am. I guess I just find it interesting that we both took notice in each other quir quirky habits. Weirdo. Our conversations in the courtyard were usually just, uh, just silly. It was like talking to a good friend in the class. Shallow, but genuinely enjoyable. It's always so cool here, even in summer. Don't mention summer. Hmm? Why, you don't like it? Not with summer school right around the corner. That'd be, that'd be enough to make anyone run for the hills. <laughs> I guess so. But we're seniors now. It comes with the territory, you know? The time for fun and game is over. I don't know. You seem like you're still having a lot of fun to me. Well, I'm a bit of a special case. I'm just happy because I feel like my dream might actually come true. Oh? I just enjoy teaching things to people and having others depend on me. Why's that? I guess it makes me feel like a big sis or something. And since I'm an only child, you know. Oh, okay. Well, good luck with that then. Wow, that was about as dismissive as a com as common as you can get. Hey, not like I can do anything about it, you know. Despite his occasional boorishness, I still felt that Sukasa was a kind soul. If nothing else, he never actually laughed at my dream. And in high school crap, 
And in a high school crowd, most people don't take you very seriously when you say you're trying to become a teacher. Tsukasa just wasn't like most people, I guess. The seasons were quickly turning to autumn. After the school day ended, the senior, the senior floor was always a lot more quiet than its upperclassmen counterparts. Everyone was all studying hard at the library or with tutors. So one day, thinking no one else was around, I sat down in a lonely corner of the hallway. Initially, I had grabbed my shoes and left the classroom, intending to head home. But along the way, I started crying. I was overwhelmed. My sobs echoed from one end of the hallway to the other. That day, I finally received a special recommendation to my top choice university. I was so excited, I just wanted to tell someone, so I told my friend Tomoe, but her usual supportive demeanor took on somewhat harsh, harsher edge. Quit rubbing it in my face. You know I'm still totally undecided about my future, right? My expression must have changed pretty drastically. Tomoe's eyes suddenly widened and she quickly apologized. So I smiled and told her I didn't care. That's what I said anyways. But how couldn't I care? Tomoe's dismissive words struck me like a dagger to my chest. I'm so... insensitive sometimes. I wonder if anyone else feels the same about me. I kept wiping the tears from my eyes, only for, few, only for new ones to take their place immediately. Why did I think of this sooner? So many people were still facing uncertain futures with no real goals in mind, and I was completely oblivious to it. I was the one with the dream, running around like a clock, like a clock, wow, clock. Running around like the cock of the walk and, bo and babbling about my success and aspirations. I wouldn't blame them if they hated me. Could someone that, in could someone that insensitive to the feelings of so many people really become a teacher? <laughs> that's a, I think that's a question that answers itself. <laughs> Did I ever, <laughs> some teachers are pretty fucking insensitive. Did I ever even have what it takes to begin with? Shishido? I quickly turned towards the voice that had called out to me and found, found Tsukasa standing right there. We never said a word before when passing each other in the hall, but he spoke to me the day that day with no reservation, as if we were old chums. Tsukasa? Your face is a mess. You have a handkerchief? Yeah. Then wipe your face. Okay. Tsukasa's concern and confusion was clearly written on his face. I didn't want to cause him any trouble or worry him, so I began frantically wiping my eyes. Did something happen? No, everything's fine. You're crying an awful lot for someone who's got no problems. No, it's just there was a little misunderstanding between, friend, between a friend and I. But we patched it up right away, so it's alright, really. These are, you know, something like tears of happiness, I guess. Hmm? Yep. See, I just found out that I got that recommend- I'm not sure if I did it out of respect for Tsukasa or just because I wanted to change the subject, but I cut myself off mid-sentence. I was doing it again. What was I thinking? Now even Tsukasa was going to hate me for being a bra- for being a braggart. I can't even say that word. I don't even know what that word is. Regard? Braggart? Braggart? I don't know. Hell, I hated myself. I was the worst. Just the worst. But... Whoa, really? He was happy for me. A bit taken back, I nodded firmly. You did it then. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Hmm? Thank you. So what's with the waterworks? Even with the recommendation, you still have to take an entrance exam, right? Yeah. So isn't it a little early to be crying tears of joy? <laughs> yeah, maybe so. I was just really happy that you congratulated me. Oh, come on now. Sorry. For what? For crying like this, without even knowing why. If you don't know why you're doing it, then how about you hurry up and dry those eyes? Sure. I think I'm fine now, anyways. I swear. As I rubbed my swollen eyes, a smile broke through, and Tsukasa let out an exaggerated sigh. Then as, if, then as if suddenly remembering something, his eyes lit up. 
Oh, hey, wait here a sec. Hmm? Okay. Tsukasa ran to his classroom, quickly reappearing in the hallway again just moments later. He was holding something. Here, I want you to have this. A pencil? In his, outsketch, in his outstretched hands rested a short, stubby little pencil. Not the sort of thing you expect someone to go out of their way just to lend you. It was po it was <clears throat> it was pocked here and there with small scratches, but it still seemed to be in relatively decent shape, considering how obviously well worn it was. A pencil for graduating success. Graduated uh graduated my bad guaranteed success guaranteed completely different words. Use it on your test and you'll pass for sure. What really? Yep, they told me I never passed the entrance exam for Kisaragi Academy. But, well, here I am, and I owe it all to this pencil. So this is the same pencil you used back when you took your high school application test. Sure is. It really jerked out a miracle. Hmm. I assume you mean worked out a miracle, right? <laughs> it jerked out a miracle. What the fuck? Now, that, now that's a thing. Uh, yeah, that. At any rate... I shall happily take you up on your kind offer. Thanks. But listen, I'm only lending it to you until you finish your test. You have to give it back afterwards so I can use it for my own interest exams. Okay. And whatever you do, don't fail the exam. Right. I took the pencil and nodded, smiling. This time, Sukasa returned my smile. You're a real unique person, you know that? It's hard to believe you... It's hard to believe how much you let other people's problems get to you. You make an amazing teacher. What? For a moment, I had no idea what he was talking about, but then it hit me. Sukasa had somehow sussed out from our conversation that I was crying because I was a because I upset Tomoe. And he was turning he was turning that fact around to offer me encouragement. Good luck. Don't let it get to you. I heard you shouldn't wish someone luck in times of stress. As it just adds more pressure. That's why people that's why people tell actors to break a leg instead. But I didn't care. Taboo or no, I cherished his kind words. I'll do my best, Sukasa. Glad to hear it. That's when I that's when I really started to f fall for him. But it didn't seem like he noticed, and there wasn't really any indication that he felt the same way. I can still clearly recall the events of that day even now. It was October, the day before my entrance exam. Oh, don't tell me the dude got hit by a car. Come on. The weather outside had been miserable since morning. Invisibly, invis invisibility was all but non-existent. It would be a bad omen if I were to slip and fall on the day before the exam, so I decided I'd wear boots to school just to be safe. See you later. Huh? When I opened the door, I was shocked to see a white-haired old woman laying on the ground, soaked to the bone. I frantically rushed over to her side. Are you okay? Stay with me. Come on, tell me what happened. Was it a hit and run? The road running by my house was narrow and mostly used only for our neighbors. But it's not like it was closed off to outside traffic or anything, so hit and run wasn't out of the question. I looked over to the old woman's body as best as I could. Fortunately, there was no signs of any serious injury. Doesn't seem like a car accident, at least. Young lady. Yes? You must not go to school today. What? You absolutely must not go. Huh? The old woman raised, her, raised herself up slightly and spoke hoarsely. From the tone of her voice, she seemed terribly desperate. But I have to. Today's my last chance to practice for college entrance interview. interview. No. Just stay home. Don't go. I have to. The interview is part of the exam I'm worse at. Please tell me what's wrong. Where's your family? Will you? Will I? Will you go no matter what? Yeah. In that case, please... Not knowing what to say, I nodded apprehensively as the old woman began digging through her pockets. She produced what looked like a crumbled scrap of paper. As she was sticking around, I noticed that her breathing had become dangerously ragged 
and began considering my options to assist her. Really, I should have gone back into the house and called my mom, but there was something about her that kept me glued to the spot. I sensed depression hiding in, the bro in an unbroken gaze. You must take this. What is it? A charm. A charm? The old woman clutched her wrist and forcefully pressed the scrap of paper into my palm. Tilting my head, I unfolded the scrap and looked carefully at it. At first, I thought it was just a handed piece of trash. What? But when I unfolded all the way, I saw that it was actually a paper doll in the shape of a human being. And there was a name written on it on its torso. Yui Shishido. Yes, my name. Written plain as day in easy legible brush strokes. Why is my name on it? So it can protect you. Huh? If you don't write the name on the person you wish to protect, the charm won't work. Huh? Crazy. This is all crazy. I didn't understand any of it, save for one simple fact. This old woman was here specifically to give me this strange paper charm. As far as I was aware, we were totally strangers the other any other day. But she clearly knew both my name and my address. No. Um, I'm sorry. I know you came a long way to give this to me, but I don't want it. You don't want it? As, as I extended my arm to return the paper doll, I can sense her entire demeanor had changed. She raised up her body, up slightly from the wet asphalt. Why not? Um, well... I've nearly killed myself bringing this to you. Why will no one listen to me? You must not even enter Heavenly Host Elementary without this charm. Heavenly Host Elementary? Yes, you must not go. Don't go. As the old woman cried out, the paper doll fluttered lightly to the ground. Almost, almost instantaneously, it became soaked through with rainwater. My name began to r run and quickly turn into a illegible black smudge. Seeing this, the old woman grabbed and tore at her hair. No! The charm! The way out has been lost. Ma'am, please calm down. Listen. You must not go to Heavenly Host Elementary. I think there's been some mistake. My school at Kizaragi High. I never even heard of Heavenly Host Elementary. Ma'am? Oh, God. Mom, come quick. There's a dead body. What's wrong? An old woman collapsed in front of our house. Call an ambulance. Okay. Paramedics arrived in a matter of minutes. The old woman seemed to be unconscious by that point. However, so the EM... Wait, what? By that point, however, so the EMTs brought out a stretcher. Oh, I get... There's really no reason for the word however to be there. Do either of you know this woman? No, she just collapsed in front of our house. We've never seen her before. Alright. Would you be willing to ride with her in the ambulance? Uh, the idea of making this old woman go to the hospital by herself just seemed like it would have been a shameful thing to do. Sure, she was a stranger, but we had a lengthy conversation merely minutes before, so I couldn't have very well I could have I couldn't have very well said we had nothing to do with each other. Huey, you need to get to school. What? But don't worry, I'll go with her into the hospital. You have to practice for the interview today, right? Yeah, I guess I do. Thanks, Mom. I'll leave her with you. Good luck. I was a little hesitant, but I knew I really had to go to school today, no matter what. So I left the strange woman in my mom's care and headed towards the school. Walked right by the first stretcher. Good. Suddenly, a hand rose from the limb from the old woman and grabbed my skirt. Startled, I tried to jump away, but found myself ensnared by her terrible bloodshot eyes. You must not go. After school, once my final practice interview had concluded, I reunited with my friends and engaged in the usual regiment of gossip and small talk. Can you believe that? It's really scary. The hell was wrong with her? 
Well, I dis while I described the events of that morning, everyone's brows rose. They were hanging around every word and yelping in unison to key moments. Do you maybe you should have stayed home after all? Well, but I had to practice. I had to practice interview. I could have missed that, you know. I just hope nothing bad happens. Oh come on! What could happen? Oh, you know what? Hmm. When you mentioned Heavenly Host Elementary, I thought it sounded kind of familiar, and I just realized why. You know the Seven Wonders, right? There's always fucking Seven Wonders. Every goddamn anime school shit. You know the Seven Wonders. Fucking, I'll smack the shit out of Kingdom Hearts for putting me through that crap. You know the Seven Wonders. The stairs, they count different every time. Oh wait, the guy just couldn't count. Huh? Fucking Seven Wonders, my ass. You mean those urban legends about Kisaragi? Yeah, those. Does Heavenly House Elementary have some connection to them? One of the stories is called Yoshi After School. Ever heard of it? Definitely not. Never heard of it either. What is it about? Well, it takes place at Heavenly House Elementary, which once occupied the same plot of land where Kisaragi now stands. Okay. It said that one day after school, a female teacher who had been patrolling the ground slipped and fell down the stairs and died. The accident took place on a rainy October day, just like this one, and occurred just after 7 at night. And suppose, supposedly, Yoshi still appears on days like this. Ever unaware that she died at Heavenly Host there many, many years ago, she now walks the halls of Kisaragi Academy, believing them to be her own. Isn't... Isn't that the uh, lady that the principal killed? Like, in... Yeah, I think... I'm trying to think. I think that's the lady that the principal killed in the first game. And she's the reason why Sachiko keeps killing kids and bringing them to her. Oh, come on. No. Is it true? Huh. Well, it can be one of the seven wonders if... Someone hadn't actually seen it happen, right? That's really creepy. Why don't you head home, Yui? You're the only one who doesn't live nearby, so we can't walk with you. And given the stuff the old woman said to you. Yeah, it's always best to head to heed the warnings of the elderly. You might be right. <laughs> I'm still I'm still feeling kinda on edge. Probably best I go home and check with mom. I'll see you guys later then. Bye. See ya. Take care. Give it everything you got tomorrow. I will. I quickly packed up my things and rushed out of the classroom. It was really, it was already about five. It was getting dark out, but if Kana's story was to be believed, I had until seven before anything bad might happen. As I continued welding, uh, <clears throat> as I continue, uh, winding, wind, winding, 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 oh, my way down the corridor. I just kept telling myself there's nothing to be afraid of. Even so, it felt like it, I uh, can't read. Even so, it felt like it took an extra long time to reach the shoe lockers. Man, I'm such a scaredy cat. Oh, hey Shishido. Sukasa. And at home? Yep. What's with the big grin? <laughs> it's nothing. Hey, why don't we walk? Why don't we walk together at least part of the way? Mm, sure, I don't mind. Great. When I took, when I looked at Sukasa's face, my fear vanished. It, uh, eh. my fear vanished. If but for a moment. There are the times when it's really nice to have boys around. I thought. I felt like I felt like that as long as he was by my side, nothing bad could happen. Didn't hurt that. Didn't hurt that I had a crush on him, of course. The rain held... I can't fucking read. What's wrong? I'm taking a drink of my water. I'm stuttering too goddamn much. The rain had let up since... Hadn't let up since the morning, though it's still... God! The rain had let up since that morning, though it was still coming down. The two of us walked side by side, umbrellas held high. Tsukasa was talking and laughing excitedly the whole time. Whereas I probably came off as preoccupied. I'm sure this was awkward. A vague sense of fear flickered inside me. 
and it was making an ex extraordinarily self conscious was making me extraordinarily self conscious. I'm certain it must have been reflected in my behavior. I'm on best behavior, <laughs> Shishido. Hmm. You look kind of pale. Did something happen? Hey. Yeah, something scary happened. Something scary. I probably seemed really on edge. Tsukasa was staring at me with this look of object concern on his face. I was a little relieved that he asked, though. And it felt good to tell him about what happened. I filled them in on all the details and explained how they related to Kana's ghost story. And did my absolute best to convey the dread I was feeling. But Tsukasa, well... The Seven Wonders of Kisaragi, hi, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so you actually believe in that stuff? Sometimes I wish I could see the world through your eyes. What? Hmm? You don't think it's scary? It's weird, sure. But I wouldn't call it scary. I don't worry about that old woman's... I wouldn't worry about what the old woman said to you. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Bullshit! I'm be honest, if any old lady comes up to me, hands me a charm with my name on it, and I don't know what the fuck's going on, I'll be like, you know what? I'ma listen to you. You seem like you know what's going on. Is it weird? Yeah, it's weird, but I'ma listen to you. <laughs> but, wouldn't it be better not to dwell on it, either way? I mean, yeah, your encounter with her sounds like it was kind of unsettling, but she was probably just a little off, you know? That's not the issue here. The issue is that she knew who the fuck I was. Huh? I wasn't asking you to solve my problems for me. What? Look, I just wanted to vent, okay? I just wanted you to listen. What do you mean? That's what I've been doing. No, not like that. I don't get it. Why are you angry? Guys always do this. It varies from person to person, of course. But guys invariably jump right onto looking for solutions to your problem or giving you advice on what to do. I mean, are we not supposed to? There's a problem, you find the source, you cut the source, problem done. As a result, girls often can't be totally honest with them or don't want to be at any rate and are forced to just bottle up their feelings. Oh, you want to talk about bottling up feelings, motherfucker? <laughs> you want to talk about that? I bet men bottle more feelings than women do. On average. Not all men. I only wanted Tsukasa to share in some of my fears. If he was scared with me, that would have been enough. I didn't real I didn't realize that that I didn't real I didn't realize then that Tsukasa telling me not to worry was his way of showing concern. I just thought he was brushing me off, and frankly, that annoyed me. What the fuck? What happened? She did a whole 180. My mind flashed back and over, <laughs> back and over and over again to the face, the eyes, and the hoarse voice of the old woman. Amplifying and distorted by the ghost story, these images gradually darkened my mood. Maybe I was traumatized by the events I experienced, or maybe I was just frustrated and needed to lash out. I don't know. But for the first time ever, things had become decidedly uncomfortable between the two of us. Okay, well this is me. Right? Shishido. He called out my name and I briskly walked away. I didn't really know why I was so angry or confused, but I did notice that his voice was tinging with concern. If anything should happen, feel free to contact me. I considered turning back for a second, but changed my mind and pushed forward in a huff, leaving him behind. I'm home. To Daimas. Yuri, yeah, welcome back. Hmm? Greeting me at the door, my mother wore a somber expression. I could tell right away that something had happened. Oh, the old lady died. I stared at her with the scrunch, with scrunched, uh, scrunched eyebrows, scrunched, 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 with scrunched eyebrows for an awkwardly long time before she even reluctantly opened her mouth to speak. About the old woman from this morning. Yeah? The hospital contacted me. She passed away a short while ago. No. I'm sorry. You need to stay focused on tomorrow's exam right now, though. Yeah. She would put this. We should put this unpleasant behind us. I'm getting. I'm getting dinner started now. So how about you get changed? Okay. I'll be in my room. 
I'll call you. I watched my mom work her way back to the kitchen, then wriggle out of my shoes. My mood darkened even more. Sakasa's attitude was bad enough, but attitude? Hold up! What? <laughs> attitude? Okay. Was bad enough, but for, <laughs> but for the old woman to have died? Returning to my room, I couldn't muster the energy to do anything but collapse into my chair and sprawl out on the desk. You must not go. The last thing the old woman had said to me echoed again and again in my mind. I began wishing I had taken her more seriously. I should have accepted the paper doll and thanked her. I could have... Re I could have... <laughs> I should have reassured her I wouldn't go to Heavenly Host Elementary. I mean, the place didn't even exist anymore, for goodness sake. I was exhausted. It was hell of a day, and I no longer even had the energy to move. I needed to change out my school clothes, but... Still sprawled over the desk, my eyelids dropped and closed. I was out. I was out. I awoke with a start. The fresh air in the... Fresh, uh, I added the word fresh for some reason. The air in my room had gotten noticeably cooler, and I was shivering. I must have fallen asleep. Rubbing my eyes, I glanced at my clock. The needle indicated it was 6.45. It's already this late? It was black outside my window, stretched with lines from the still pouring rain. Sure hope it's sunny tomorrow. Sunny for my exam. The weight of what the day, weight of what the next day held for me came rushing into my mind. I practiced the interview process with my teachers quite thoroughly, but I was still really nervous. Okay, I need to make sure I'm ready for tomorrow. There was still a little time before dinner. My mind swimming, I decided I'd take this opportunity to clean out all the notes and textbooks I would need tomorrow from my bag. Let's see, student ID needs to stay, obviously. Handkerchief, tissues. Gotta make sure I don't forget my exam ticket. Oh, my pen case. Huh? Oh crap, where's my pen case? Did I leave it at school? Oh shit. Don't go back to that school. My face suddenly went pale. Really? Should have been too concerned over writing implements when you had tons at home. But the, uh, but that case had held the pencil, pencil that Sukasa had given me for guaranteed success on my exam. I have to go get it, bro. That listen, no, I understand. I understand she's mad at the dude, but that's when you get your phone and you say, "Listen, I might die at 7 p.m. today if I go to that school. I need you to go." Get that pencil case. Bring it back to me. He said call him if anything comes up. Like, listen, I'm pretty sure he'll believe her. Right? At that point, he gave her a fucking a special pencil for good luck. If he believes in that, then at that point, you gotta believe. Right? You gotta be like, come on, man. Real talk. I'm gonna die. <laughs> my mom, I forgot. My hey, mom, I forgot something at school, so I'm gonna run back for a sec. What? But dinner's almost ready. That's okay. I'll come right home. All right. Still raining, though. Be careful. I will. That pencil was the one thing I absolutely needed to bring with me to the test. And so without he without hesitation, I ran back down the road to school. I was sprinting as close to full speed as I could without slipping in the downpour. All the while, the numbers on my bed clock ran through my mind. 6.45, and if Connor's story was to believe, Yoshi's haunting of the school building... Is that seven? Bro, that's just that just don't look right. Just don't go on you you just sus you just suss up the school building, you're like, not nope, that looks haunted. I'm out of here. I mean who's gonna take the pencil case? It'll be there in the morning. Maybe the custodian. Maybe they'll find it in a loss and found, you know? As soon as I arrived at the gate, I glanced up at the large clock adorning the schoolhouse. It's now six fifty five. Nah bro, you got five minutes. Nope. You're out. Get out of there. Yoshi after school. I went over the whole scenario in my head again, as best as I could recall it. After classes on a rainy day in October, it's 7 at night. Did that old woman somehow know this would happen? Oh, no, she just gave you a charm with your name on it and said, said take it with you, and you instantly fucked it up. <laughs> Get a hold of yourself, Yui. It's just some old campfire tale. Yeah, but when someone's coming to you warning you about it, ain't a tale no more. 
You take that shit seriously. I was talking to myself, reprimanding myself in an effort to quell the fears of what was welling up in a pit of my stomach. There wasn't a soul to be seen on the grounds by this time. The students had to all go home. I wonder if any teachers were st even still around. If there's no soul to be seen, if no one's there, then your pencil case is fine. Get it in the morning. Fortunately, the lights were, or at least, or at least wait like, at least wait till like, you know, crack of dawn or something if you need it that badly. Fortunately, the lights were all still on, and it was bright enough that I felt confident I could make it to the classroom without freaking out. Okay, I'll just run up, grab the case, then come right back. Yeah, it don't look, it don't look like there's lights on. No, that's when you turn around. That's when you turn around and you leave. <laughs> if it looks like lights on are on on the, on the outside and you walk inside a building and the lights are off, you turn around and you leave. You go. You're out of there. I folded out my silk umbrella and left it on the racks of the entrance and changed it to my indoor shoes. You ain't got time to change to your indoor shoes. Then entering the brightly lit hallway, I took another look around. I guess I was right. Nobody's home. My deep sigh echoed through, uh, my deep sigh echoed through the deathly silent corridor. Ordinarily, the din of other students would drown out the noise, like this, but every but every little sound was coming through crystal clear at this late hour. Want to know what the fun part about being mentally ill is? I don't. I don't think there's a fun part. I think it's all bad. I would assume, though. I need to hurry. It's almost seven. I nervously sauntered down classroom three four, picking up speed as it concerned, as it con uh, as it occurred to me to do so. About the old woman from this morning, she passed away a short while ago. It said that one day after school, a female teacher who had been patrolling the ground slipped and fell down the stairs and died. The accident took place on a rainy October day, just like this one, and occurred just after seven at night. And supposedly, Yoshi still, uh, Yoshi still appears on days like these. Ever aware that she died at Heavenly Host these many years ago, she now walks the halls of Kisaraki Academy, believing them to be her own. Jeez, what the hell is wrong with me? Why am I letting this bother me so much? Sakasa was right. I shouldn't dwell on this. Lightning flash and thunder, res uh, thunder resounded with impeccable timing. I jumped in spite of myself. I just need to hurry up these stairs, grab the pin case, and get the hell out of this creepy building. No ghost should show up in a well-lit building like this, right? And even- No ghost should show up in a well-lit building. What the fuck you think this is? Of course they're gonna show up in a well-lit building. Ghost got no rules. <laughs> and even if they did, they wouldn't be very scary under all these bright lights. I'm not- I'm not sure about that. If I saw a decapitated person walking towards me, I'll lose my shit. Absolutely need the pencil for tomorrow's test. It's my good luck charm after all, and it's from Sukasa. I picked up the pace and I continued to head straight for the room. The medicine they give you is so, uh, so your muscle group just randomly pulsates whenever they want to. I had a lot of problems with tricep, chest. Oh shit. Those are the muscles I feel the most. Spasms are now again. Um. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. How do I say this? I relate to you in that way, but not in the diagnosis. I have a different problem with me where I randomly get like muscle twitches and spasms because I fuck, I hate talking about this because it makes me sound like I'm, I'm trying to pity myself. But um, ever since I was a kid, right? Well, not ever since. It hasn't been a problem in my adulthood. But since I was from like the age four to nine, I would have... I don't know what the fuck I would have. The doctors didn't even know what I would have, but I would have like, I would have very violent muscle spasms that they, they would write them down as seizures, but I never had any of the brain activity of a seizure, right? But it was just violent shit like that where I would lose control of my whole body and stuff like that. And it felt like my fucking, one of my legs, I don't know which one of my legs, but it felt like one of them would be like swallowed up by a void or some shit. It sucked. I fucking hated it. I would have those like yearly and then when I was nine 
I had one so bad that like I just blacked out and that was when I was in the hospital too. And then I don't even remember anything happening after that. I just remember waking up in the car and going home. Right? I don't know what the hell happened. I just woke up in the car and I said, why aren't we at the hospital? What happened? And my mom's like, they said you were fine. And I'm like, so I guess that part of my memory just is just gone. I don't know what the fuck happened, but I'm assuming maybe left over from some experience like that. Like, I definitely have like some, some like weird twitches that happen in my body from time to time, but they don't really bother me. You can imagine how bad, you can imagine how terrified I was when I started getting my sleep paralysis too. By the way, I constantly have like insomnia and sleep paralysis. Thanks a lot, school, for fucking me up. I hate all of you. <laughs> I picked up the pace as I continued to head straight for room, uh, three, four. Yeah, I used to take, uh, they used to give me medication for, like, muscle spasm stuff, but I don't take them no more. Because if I, if I kept taking them or whatever, I would be labeled for, like, disability and shit. But I was like, I want to eventually, like, even though I don't like driving, I want to eventually be able to get a car and go places and stuff like that. But fortunately, nothing bad has happened since then and it's all been fine you know just a little bit uncomfortableness from here and there but at that point I just see it as normal well not normal but normal in my case the middle school is really pitch black I, I guess there's really just no one else around right now and this hallway feels longer today than it ever has before <laughs> this definitely isn't that medication that was taking on side effect of yeah yeah, that's why that's why I said it wouldn't be the same like as diagnosis. Like they're definitely two medicate two different medications. And this hallway feels longer today than ever has before. As it always was, it always like this. Can't imagine I ever been on time if it were. I continue my brisk walk down the impossible long hallway towards my goal, jumping every now and again whenever another thunderclap sounded. Kisaragi Academy was comprisoned. Comprisoned. Ugh was comprised of both a middle school and a high school, and this evening, it really felt like it was flaunting in its massive size. Didn't help that my classroom was in the middle, was in a high school wing, which happened to be the, uh, what happened to be past the middle school, making it seem like much farther. When a building that usually so full of life goes completely quiet, it come, it becomes such a lonely place. I swear, I can never, I can never, eh, I swear I can hear every drop of rain. I was focusing on the, on the scant? What the fuck? I was focusing on the scant few sounds around me, and I placed down that long, lonely corridor. Then, all of a sudden, I heard a faint noise, as if someone playing an organ. Nope, that's when you get the fuck out of there. That was just my imagination, right? I mean, it had to be. There's no way anyone would still be here practicing, right? Knowing someone with 340 bench and what the fuck is gonna happen when we try his up as a Oh man. Oh no, yeah, no. I mean that's that's why you get spotters, right? Like you you always have a spotter. You gotta get a spotter. You always get you always gotta make sure they're paying attention. Don't do that absent mind shit. I want you to focus. I want you to get ready to catch this fucking weight if I somehow just lose it. Right? You gotta be ready. Gotta get someone you trust to do that shit, especially with something like that. Uh, I do a deep breath. Uh, try to calm my nerves. It was probably the sound of rain, wind, and thunder mixing together. It just sounded like an organ, that's all. I was convinced. I kept walking. But then, I heard the same noise again this time, much more clearly. It was unmistakable. Oh, I can hear that organ going, too. No, no way. I was paralyzed with fear. My heart was pounding as if it were struggling to break free of someone's sin someone sinister grip. It's probably just some devoted member of the band or a teacher who's working late. I'm just being stupid. You have a... I don't, I don't think that's what that sound is. I mean, if I was in a school building and I heard a fucking organ... I would be like, no, that's not right. I don't think my school has an organ unless there's like a fucking church 
on the school or like, or I've seen it from myself. I've heard a piano. That make more sense. But still, you hear a piano in the middle of the night. It's creepy as fuck. <laughs> Thinking about it, I vaguely recall someone mentioning an upcoming performance by the Wind Instrument Club. I guess the organ would qualify. Is the organ a wind instrument? I don't think I don't think an organ's a wind. Is it? No. Is that classified as a wind? No. You have to blow into it. At the base of the most is gonna happen. It's gonna give to ask old boy to take three hundred five off my chest. Yeah. I mean, you can always well. I can't say you can always because because I'm because strength training is different from like from like just just you know just spitballing here strength training is different from like aerobics or something like that but you can always try and find like other workouts that you can do to work out those areas and just maybe lighten the weight and do more repetitions or something but I but if you're trying to I mean like, that will definitely build muscle, but if your goal is to, like, if you already have muscle and your goal is to build more muscle, then I guess you would have to, like, do, like, you know, what's the word I'm looking for here? You would have to worry about, like, your max instead of uh, doing repetitions. You know, push past that limit, I guess. Somebody must have stayed late to practice, that's all. I can't get that damn ghost story out of my head. I took another deep breath and tried again to calm my overly jittered nerves. The Endeavor has always been to be the strongest motherfucker in the room. <laughs> Definitely. Me, I just want to be, like, the most competent in the room, you know? Like, if I have enough strength to, like, pick up my stuff that I want to pick up and move them when I gotta switch houses and stuff like that, I'm good, you know? To me, I just want people to be like, hey, man, that's the guy I'm gonna ask to help me move. I don't need to, I don't need to be the strongest in the room. That's definitely not for me. <laughs> Anything can be scary if you think of it. I actually, uh, I would, I would prefer, for myself, I would prefer to get, like, a leaner body rather than, like, a more athletic body, you know? I heard that if you were, if you were, eh, I heard that if you let out your, your imagination run wild, fear can even make you see things that aren't there. My imagination was most definitely running wild. It's part of a 1,000 club for a while. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm almost there. I might, as well, I might as well sprint the rest of the way. What is the 1,000 club? Is that... I'm assuming that's like a bodybuilder thing, right? I decided to dash towards my classroom so I could get out of this hallway as quick as possible. Finally reached that similar door, I swiftly opened it and flicked on the lights. Alright, I made it. Now I just have to be absolutely certain I don't leave I don't leave without a pen case again. Thanks to all my unexpected pauses to freak out over thunder and lightning, it took me far longer than it should have to get here. It was already well past seven. Seven o'clock, huh? Oh, you're gonna die. <laughs> it was the it was the appointed time when the ghost of the teacher was supposedly to appear. Was supposedly, did I just say that? Was supposed to appear at least according to the school's legend. It's a bench squat and deadlift measure for the, the thousand pound. Oh shit, really? So it's like the mile high club. Like a, like a, I guess for lack of a better word, superficial thing. Where like, there's no actual like, group of people. It's just all like, yeah, no, I'm part of that. I did it. <laughs> no undead educators here. I let out a sigh of relief and relaxed my shoulders a bit. The lights were on both inside the classroom and out of the hallway. Sure, it was still, uh, it was still dead silent, but the fear I'd been feeling had completely melted away. Yeah, there's something to be afraid of. Some wonders aren't real. I grabbed the pin case. I come back for to, I come back for it and shoved it into my pocket. Okay, mission accomplished. With my long ordeal. Behind me, more or less, I looked around the classroom and let out another sigh. I only ever known this classroom when it was bustling with activity. I just found an eerie silence and utter stillness to be oddly fascinating. Such a strange feeling being alone in a classroom like this. I got the idea in my head to 
to try to do something I normally wouldn't be able to, like standing at the teacher's podium and writing on the blackboard. Chances like this don't come by too often, after all. I love how she's all like, yep, it's definitely the time of my death. I'm just going to fuck around in the classroom. No, you get out of there. <laughs> you, the moment you go like, yep, it's the time of my death, you just, you at that point, you just look around, you're like, okay, if I were to jump from the second story, would I make it? <laughs> I dreamed of standing there myself one day and could hardly resist to pull the urge of, of presence. Wow. Pull... I can't even say the fucking word. I added the word urge in there, too. I dreamed of standing there myself one day and could hardly resist its pull when presented with a rare opportunity like this. Well, no one's looking. To my classmates, this would seem like such a silly, stupid dilemma, but that didn't change the way I felt at the moment. Should I or shouldn't I? Oh, get the fuck out of here. No, 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 no. Why are you giving me this choice? Where's my, uh... <laughs> the only time I ever needed to spot was when I was mentioned three or five. You should always have a spotter. You should always have a spotter just in case. That's the that's how I feel about it. I'd rather just in case something were to happen, right? Because you know, like even in the gym, I I don't like me. I usually try not to go to go to the gym when there's a lot of people there. I would go like either late at night or in the morning or something. When I had a gym before it closed down, thanks COVID. Um. Even then, I would, I would make sure just to like, just get someone to like pay attention or something. Like, I would rather have someone be there, you know, like right there and spot me. But you know, a lot of people like to fuck around in the gym, absentmindedly do shit, you know. And it's just like, something could happen. They can fuck up my form. I can lose my grip or something, right? Like, I'd rather not take that risk. <laughs> like, I've seen people fucking hurt themselves doing stupid shit before. So I don't want to hurt myself doing something less stupid. <laughs> you know? Fucking... Isn't it? I don't even think I can say it. Oh my god. Oh, there we go. I was like, what's... I was like, what's the menu button? I'm saving this so I don't fuck this up. Alright. Now, my choice here would be to just fucking leave the room and be like, I'm out of here. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm gone. I think that's the smart idea. Just leave the room. But how can I pass this up as a chance to feel like a real teacher? I decided I had to try it. During daily cleanup and such, I had come and gone from this spot countless times. But this was the first time I ever had an opportunity to just stand here and preside over the classroom. So, this is how it looks as a teacher, huh? It's kind of awe-inspiring. Gaining a teacher's point of view in the most literal sense was star staring, uh, staring, was starting to get me really fired up. It may seem silly now, but this was my stage. This is where all my dreams would play out. Someday, I began to imagine the future that awaited me. Painstakingly detail, uh, detailing some new pieces of knowledge for student, sitting attentively at their desk, gliding chalk across the board, filling it with information to aid them in their stu in their studies. I'm sure. Hope I can make this cutout. I can make the cutout one of these days. Sorry, I had to listen in real quick because I was like. There's the background music going, and then there's the organ that also started playing from earlier. I was suddenly so excited that even I began to think my behavior was a little strange. Maybe it was the... just... what the fuck? Just the position? I've never seen that word a day in my life. Oh my god. English, I hate you. Of these joyous free versions... versions... visions. And the prickling dread I've been feeling up until... Uh, feeling up until just a minute or two before. But then, in a blink of an eye, one of these two conflicting emotions completely overpowered the other. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Crap. Isn't this a blackout? Suddenly, my surroundings were bathed in darkness. You know what? I think if I were to run out the room... You're heading out? Alright, that's cool. See you later, man. Have a good one. I think if I were to... 
if I were to choose to leave the classroom, I probably would have, the lights probably would have gone out as she was going downstairs and she probably would have broke her neck or some shit. Suddenly my surroundings were bathed in darkness. Going stiff with shock, I stumbled back a step. My back struck the blackboard with a dull thud. What awful timing. I instinctively grabbed hold of the rails where the racer sat. I felt chalk dust against my fingertips. My panicked heartbeat was making it difficult to breathe. Was this caused by the thunderstorm? If so, it sure packed a, uh, sure packed a fine time to turn... Packed? Sure picked a fine time to turn the lights out on me. And what's more, I can still hear the sound of the organ. But no, it's an electric organ. How is it even possible with no power? You must not go. Was this what the old woman was trying to warn me about? That's impossible. She was no fortune teller or psychic, as far as I was aware. How could she possibly have known this would happen? Hell, even if she were a fortune teller or psychic, predicting the future is stuff of sci a science fiction. I shook my head. I need to calm down. Maybe it's just this wing that lost power and the music room's still okay. That seems plausible, right? I curled my chalk dusted fingers into a fist and silently tried to take some sense to myself. I got, I gotta get out of here. I should have been playing teacher. I should have been in the, I should have been in and out by now. Cursing myself a little, I fumbled my way through the darkest classroom. I spent so much time in here. You think I'd be able to find my way out, uh, my way out of it with my eyes closed, as it were? But sadly, that wasn't the case. Smashing loudly into a desk, I knocked it on its side and began tumbling after it, instinctively grabbing at another desk around me for support. Damn it! Sounds like I knocked a lot of stuff out of that desk. Guess I need to put everything back. Still fumbling around blindly, I gather up all, this, all, this scatter, uh, all the scattered notes, textbooks, and writing utensils. I can't tell what, what's what. This is so embarrassing. What the heck am I doing anyways? Wasn't I supposed to be hurrying home? I'm such a klutz. I let out a sigh. I seem to be doing that a lot lately. Okay, this is a textbook. And this is a notebook, right? I was trying to take inventory of all the things I knocked out of the desk, and then realize, then realize why. I might as well just stand up and stuff it all back in. I couldn't possibly organize it probably in absolute darkness. Better just apologize tomorrow for whoever sat here. Not that it was a particularly pleasant prospect. Explaining what I'd done without, uh, wouldn't be easy. No matter how I sugarcoat it, it would have served as a clear indication of my clumsiness. If I didn't say anything, it's not like I'd be found out, but that would be the same as lying, as far as I'm concerned, and I couldn't do that. Okay, I think I got everything. I placed my head against the floor and sw swiped it around, feeling for anything I might have missed. And I found something, all right. Ew, gross! What the hell is this? It's all slimy. I clearly brushed my fingers across something, but I had no idea what it was. It was no notebook or writing implement, though. That's for sure. Why would anybody have something like this in their desk? Maybe it had been on the floor all along. What is this stuff? I rubbed my sticky fingers a bit together into a wet what? I rubbed my sticky fingertips a, uh, a bit deeper into the wet spot. Then brought, my hand, then brought my hand close to my face so I could get a better look at what it was. What on earth did I just touch? <laughs> it was a flash of lightning almost immediately joined by a roaring thunderclap. And with it, for a split second, the pitch black classroom was lit up bright as day. God, is this blood? I shot to my feet, utterly mortified. In that split second, I've gotten a very good look at my fingers, and it really didn't seem as if they were covered in blood. But it wasn't just my hand, no. If my... If my prefer... Uh, prefer uh, God. Peripheral vision, can't say that, can't say that word, <laughs> were to be trusted, it looked like the entire classroom was stained a deep, dark crimson. Crap, it kind of smells like blood in here, too. Without thinking, I packed away, packed away? I backed away from where I began crouching. I tried real, realizing that I, uh, I tried rationalizing, rationalizing what I saw. How could a whole classroom become a bloodbath like this? Did someone spill? Did something spill? Did someone stumble in here, injured? This is impossible. It can't be. I mean, how? My whole body was quaking. I fled from the classroom. Or rather, I tried to flee. What? Why won't it open? 
please no. I don't remember locking it. And it isn't locked, so why can't I get it open? I pulled on the door handle and again and again in a frenzy. I was pulling so hard it felt like my fingernails might tear loose. But it was but it just wouldn't budge. Why? Why please? I was I was absentmindedly grabbing at my hair with with one hand and slamming my fist on a nearby desk with the other. This was a nightmare. Please no, what's going on? Silence silence saturated the inky blackness of the room. I took several deep breaths in an effort to restrain my pounding heart. Calm down. I have to calm down. Probably just panicking because the door won't open. I'm sure I just misidentified whatever it was that was on the floor. I mean, it's preposterous, right? There's no way something like that could be. I was certain that when I saw that when I saw what it actually was coming morning, I end up being something totally end up being something totally random, like someone's old soda stained gym clothes. That has to be it, yeah. I probably just brushed against somebody's paint for art class or something. My imagination was just running wild because I was panicking. And the door probably just had something caught in it, that's all. I decided to check out the hypothesis by feeling my way across the door and determining if anything jutting out of it from any cracks. Damn, not sure if I can do it without being able to see. I fell around the gaps in the door, but I just couldn't make anything out. And that would... Uh, couldn't make anything out that would be doing this. And the classroom's rare exit seemed a world away. Maybe there's another way out of here. No, this was the third floor. I couldn't possibly get out of the classroom without exiting into the hallway. Let me out. I want out. Still at loss, I noticed a sudden flash of light through the hallway window. But the glass was only translucent, so I couldn't be sure if it was of its source. Is somebody out there? Then there came the distant clomp, clomp, clomp of footsteps. Oh, of course, it must be a custodian. I recalled the existence of custodians who always patrolled the school grounds. I was sure he he must have been. <clears throat> I was sure he must have been taking a look around after a sudden power outage. Great, I'm saved. All at once, my fear, my fear, adult legs regained their strength. This nightmare would come up would soon be over. Excuse me. I shouted to the custodian through the window as loudly as I could muster. Excuse me, I'm trapped in here. I had to be sure he heard me. I shouted again. Finally, I could see the line out the hallway again, and it seemed to be getting closer. However, something's not right about this. Perturbed, I, looked, I took a step away from the window. If that's a flashlight, shouldn't it be brighter? Kind of looks like, like a faint, unearthly glow. Class classically, uh, I can't even say it. What the fuck? I don't even know what that word is. A trip, attributed? I guess it's attributed. I can't tell because it's like sectioned off. You know, like the faint, like the faint unearthly glow, classically attributed by spirits. Was that what I was thinking? I tried to stop myself from finishing that thought. However, dullness aside, it also looked like it was wriggling around. In a very unnatural, very unflashlighting like way. And those footsteps. Clomp, four clomps in a third or second interval, then another four clomps. They were sounding in a fixed they were sounding in a fixed rhythm. That's not custodian. Nobody walks like that. The fear was back, in full force. I had to find somewhere to hide. What if I accidentally summoned something inhuman? I mean, whatever it was, I begged it for help. I literally invited it in. I need to hide, but where? Oh, they're giving me. The teacher's podium, supply locker. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no, you can't give me these choices. I'm just here. I'm just here to be the narrator. And the characters. But I can't make the choices. Well, I was a teacher. My dream is to be a teacher. I'm gonna die a teacher, goddammit. I hurriedly held myself beneath the teacher's podium. I grabbed my knees, curled up, and made myself as small as I could. What is this? What's happening? The footsteps continued to draw nearer and nearer. Little by little, the sound grew louder. Every hair on my body was standing on end. Please just pass by. Please just pass by. I held my breath, clasped my hands together, and silently prayed. 
They were close now. Very, very close. Please, God. Why was this happening? I couldn't make any sense of it. I just wanted it to be over. I prayed to God that it would end. Was this what the old woman was trying to warn me about? Was this all happening because I ignored her? Because I didn't take the paper doll from her? Was it because I heard the ghost story of Yoshi and allowed it to get to me? Or did the strange events of the day have nothing to do with what was happening to me now? It feels like my heart is going to burst out of my chest. I was still holding my breath. I didn't dare let even the tiniest of sounds escape and give away my position. Hmm? The constant rhythm of the footsteps suddenly ended halfway into one of its cycles. And it ended right it right in the and it had ended right in front of this very classroom. I had goosebumps up and down my arms and legs. I stopped praying and clasped my hands over my mouth. I knew if I screamed, uh I knew I screamed if I didn't. Couldn't this be Yoshi? Could this be Yoshi? Was the school legend real? All I could do was close my eyes, keep my mouth shut, and hope that whoever or whatever this was could just go away. But the footsteps sounds didn't start again. If this was indeed Yoshi, then she stopped in front of the classroom and was just standing there. I had no concept of time anymore. I stayed in my hiding spot for what was probably only a few minutes, but it felt at least like an hour. Maybe whoever it was, it's gone. I decided to carefully peek out from under the podium. Don't fucking do that! I gingerly edged my head out just far enough to get a glimpse of the room, when suddenly... Oh shit. The footsteps rang out once more. They were headed right for me. It might have been inside the room. I honestly couldn't tell. I scrambled back into my hiding spot and covered my mouth with both hands. This was too much for me. My breathing was was coarse and erratic, and my face was a mess of tears and snot. God, please save me. I was uncontrol I was un I was unconsolable. Footsteps just wouldn't stop. What on earth were they doing? It's almost as if they were running around in circles just to scare me. Stop it, please stop it. I mouthed those words over and over and over and moved my hands to my moved my hands to my ears and veins to attempt to block out this torturous sound. And as if in response, the sound changed. It was loud, dull thud, sound followed by silence, no more footsteps. I heard the sound hundreds of times before it was the class door sliding open. Oh, fuck. I peeked out, but the door was still tightly shut. What could that be? If the sound I heard wasn't the door, then what was it? What little safety... What little safety I'd felt here was pretty much the spirit... The spirit had been... Wait. What little safety I felt here was pretty much gone. But to be fair, I wasn't absolutely certain the spirit had seen or heard me. Maybe it was them checking the fucking supply closet? The prospects of stepping out into the open wasn't, wasn't a desirable one, but I had to decide if it was better to stay here or if it, or for me to, t or for me to make a break for it. Oh fuck, man! Oh dude, no, no! You gave me too many choices. I made it this far. I must be doing something right. I don't know, man. I don't think it's smart to make a break for it. But what the fuck do I know? Because this game sometimes chooses the options that... Sometimes this game wants me to choose options that I don't agree with. Dude, I would stay hidden. I would wait until those fucking lights come back on. And then you, and then you just jump out the window. You just don't, don't even think about it. You just fucking tuck and roll, baby. You'll live. You may have a couple broken bones somewhere, but you'll be fine. 
I'm gonna stay hidden. Fuck that. I'll keep hiding. He'll pass by for sure. He'll be okay. But it only took a moment for that decision to come back and bite me. Oh, fuck. You kidding me? Yeah. My body was suddenly wedged, <laughs> wedged down. In an instant, without knowing what was happening, my... F my... <laughs> My fatality, uh, my, I can't even, what is that word? F fatally? My fatally position, my fatally position from form was essentially locked in place. I can't even fucking say it. Oh my god. It was like a boulder had fallen on top of me and was resting on my arched back. I twisted and shuffled myself around trying to shake it off, but the more I struggled, the heavier it became. And, <laughs> and what's more, Felt like it was slowly inching its way up towards my head, as if it was planning on dropping down in front of my face. Was this a person? Guess who? It was a female voice, reverberating honestly as if bubbling up from the depths of hell. I squirmed violently, desperate to throw her off of me. Shall we play tag together? Ah! My vision went red, or at least it felt that way. Whoever was on my bed had dug her razor-sharp fingernails into my eyes. Oh, come on. I collapsed on spot. The pain was insane. Was insatious. Was sensatious and bearable. I can't even say the word. Instantaneous. My bad. Instantaneous and unbearable. I could no longer hold my position. I could no longer focus on anything but this agony. My eyes. My eyes. My eyes. He <laughs> just turned to the guy from SpongeBob. Bad children must be punished. The pain shot through my head in waves. It was indescribable, unthinkable. I couldn't take it any longer. My consciousness faded and I was gone. I would never know exactly what happened to me, but maybe I was better off that way. I called it, didn't I? I said this game makes me choose things that I wouldn't normally choose. I knew it. I knew it. Alright, we'll load game. So then we're just gonna book it. I don't know where we're gonna book it to, right? But like, if the door's locked, I guess that sound might have might have been like the signal that, hey man, the door's open. Make a fucking break for it. Staying in one place for too long seemed like it would be an invite to trouble, be inviting trouble. So I took a deep breath and reluctantly crawled out as quietly as I could. But almost immediately, I felt something. Huh? Something long and thin has struck me in, in the back of the head. Or perhaps struck it, uh, struck isn't the right word. There was a little force behind it, but it wasn't a hard slam, more like someone trying to get my attention. She said, I'm over here, stupid. Is that a wooden rod? Oh no, it's a finger. I knew it wouldn't. I knew I wouldn't like what was what I was gonna see, but I had to face whatever it was. So I turned around, and there, looming over me, was. Is somebody still here? Go home, child. A figure was peering down from in front of me. A figure was peering down at me from above the podium, with one with one Im immaculate wishbone-like finger extended towards my face. I recognized this person instantly, no doubt about it. This was a strange old woman who supposedly passed away earlier. I was scared out of my mind. I tumbled the I, <clears throat> I tumbled the rest of my way out from under the podium and shot to my feet. A ghost. There really was a ghost in this school. My breath was my breath was ragged and my heart was pounding so hard I thought I might explode. Plowing through all the desks in my way, I ran as fast as I could towards the classroom door. But that was as far as I could go. What's wrong? There on the other side of the door, tied up against the glass, was the old woman. She was glowing bluish white, the source of the light. Alright. I'm gonna say that this is kind of a cop out, not gonna lie. You can't sit there and be like, hide from the ghost. You hide from the ghost, she kills you. Don't hide from the ghost, she don't kill you. Like, you're gonna encounter the ghost regardless. 
She was glowing bluish white, the source of the light from earlier. But how in the world did she get the door? How in the world did she get to the door before I did? How did she get out of the room so quickly and position herself so perfectly to block my exit? I felt like I was starting to hyperventilate and try to and try to as best as I could to calm my breathing as my eyes as my eyes started around the room. I need to get out of here now to get f as far away from this place as possible. If the front of the door is blocked, maybe I can get out through the back. But if I do that, I can't leave the school without running right past her. There's no way she let me by, but I have to do something. I bit my lip and continued scanning the room. Something, if I could just had something I could use to fight back. I didn't have the time to think carefully about it. I just had to grab something and hope for the best. There were two choices. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> there were two choices. I had to pick one. Uh, I had to pick one on impulse before it was too late. Oh no. Uh uh, you're not doing that. Not doing that. We're not doing that. Okay. What do I do now? Oh, fuck. Even saving the game makes me run out of time. When I looked over the spirit of the old woman was holding out her hand from the other side of the door frame. She really was trying to catch me. I wasn't just paranoid. She was going to kill me and turn me into a ghost like her. I was convinced this had to be Yoshi, the teacher from the urban legend. I had the sudden sensation of someone seizing my, uh, seizing me by the throat, accompanied by the unpleasant crunching sound. God, she really didn't have my brain. She really did have, she really did have me by the throat. I couldn't breathe. Okay, so I died. Gotcha. She was actually gripping me so tightly that she managed to raise me off the ground by my neck. I could see her slender, bony hand in the, in the prefer what? Preferbery of my vision? Preferry. Ugh, can't say the word. Preferring my vision and felt it cutting up to my trachea. Was that hand really holding me in the air against my will, kicking and flailing with just the tissue and bones of my neck? Damn. I was like a puppet on strings. Tag, you're it. Yeah, she killed me. Sudden crack. Yeah, she snapped my she snapped my neck. Great. <laughs> can't save your game. Nope. You know, I'm not actually surprised that they won't let me save my game. I, I always assumed it was just like a, you know, just a menu they put over the actual game playing in the background. Timer's still going. Oh, you were too busy saving your game. You died. Damn it. It was worth a shot, though. See. So I guess I'm, guess I'm doing this one then, right? See. Make a break for it. All right. So what was the choices? Let me see. <laughs> Here we go. There were only two choices. Oh, bag of salt. Yeah, definitely. Throw that shit in her face. This looks like leftover salt from an old chemistry experiment. I heard that salt was used to pur in purifying rituals, so it seemed like a natural choice. Okay, this is coming with me. I placed the salt in my pocket as a sort of protective charm. I'm scared. Well, here goes nothing. When I looked over, the spirit of the old woman was holding out her hand from the other side of the floor frame. She really was trying to catch me. I wasn't just being paranoid. She was going to kill me and turn me into a ghost like her. I was convinced. No, I won't let her get me. Brace myself, I dart towards the door at the back of the cla uh, at the back in the classroom. There wasn't a moment to lose. If I didn't act fast, I probably would be able to act at all. I threw the door open and just began running at top speed, holding t uh, hoping to escape behind the spirit's back. Unsurprisingly, trying to outrun a ghost proved to be fruitless endeavor. The spirit saw me and moved at breakneck speed to intercept. Don't come any closer. I thrust my hand to my pockets and withdrew the bag of salt. 
and threw the entire thing directly at the woman's face. Take that, you old bitch! <laughs> Now's my chance! Ran out of the hallway as fast as my legs could carry me, briefly glancing over my shoulder after a moment to confirm that the spirit was still writhing. Tell me to get the fuck out of here. I just kept on running down the dark hallway with nothing but adrenaline, nothing but adrenaline and moral fear to keep me going. I reached the stairwell at the end of the hall and made a mad dash towards the ground level. I was determined to get out of this building alive. You mean stop? I'm gonna keep going. Finally, still moving at top speed, I reached the window, towards the window door leading outside. Almost there. I'm almost out. Luckily, the malevolent spirit hadn't caught up to me. It actually seemed like it might be able to escape. I might be able to escape. I might actually survive this. I made it. I grabbed the handle and tried pulling it. Huh? Oh no, it won't open. See, listen. You said it was a glass. You said it was a glass door. That's when you just break that shit. You just go. I'll pay for it later. Kabam! And you just break the door. That's what I would do. Why is this? Why? I'm so close, yet so far away. Please open. I'm begging you. I have to think of something else at this rate. That horrible woman's gonna do. At this rate, horrible woman going to. No, I can't let that happen. Well, what do I do? What can I do? Run somewhere else. Break the glass. Fuck that. Break that trick. Putting my thoughts in order, I came to a sudden realization that I was right near the umbrella racks. Unless the spirit had. <coughs> Unless the spirit had taken it or something, my umbrella should still be right where I left it. Ha! Ah, here it is! I practically tackled the rack, grabbing my umbrella. <laughs> Tackle that shit to the ground. Grab my umbrella, mind, mind you, but from the top. Then, take aim at the glass part of the door and swung as hard as I could, smacking it in the dead center with the, with the sturdy plastic candle. The glass wasn't gonna break so easily, of course, but it did crack, giving me an Give me an impetus. I need to go to the se for a second hit. Break, damn you! Again and again, I struck the glass. I had the umbrella gripped so tightly that the metal skeleton of the canopy was leaving in indentations on my skin. I was sure there had to be a better way to do this, but I didn't have the luxury of time to figure out what it might have been. Stop, you must not leave. Wait, I must not leave? What the fuck you saying? You killed me before- No! She's coming this way. Break that shit. I began smacking the glass even harder, even faster. My hands were killing me, but this was my only hope of survival. Finally, after too much effort. Yes! The glass shattered onto the floor, making one hell of a sound. Uh, Tibbet air whoosh. Uh, Tibbet air whooshed from, in, from outside. It was still pouring rain, but I was free now, free to escape this hellhole. Okay. The pain I broken, uh, pain I broken. Uh. The pain I broken was on the lower half of the door, and I didn't care if I cut myself. I got down on my hands and knees and crawled like mad. I did it. I'm almost outside. I actually escaped. I'm safe. I felt triumphant for a brief moment. The fear was gone, and I was basking in victory over my over this malevolent entity. She's gonna grab like a glass and stab me with it, isn't she? Huh? But it didn't last long before I was even halfway through the door. I felt something coiling itself around my arm. But the start, I looked back. I must go outside. What do you mean I mustn't go outside? A tall, shadowy figure had appeared behind me in the entranceway. She had me. She had me in her grasp. There wasn't much more to her than than an indistinct flickering silhouette. But I should clearly see. But I could clearly see she had a broken neck. Was this different apparition? Her scraggly rooted like fingers were squeezing my arm with tremendous force, pushing aside muscles and tissues and pressing right on the bone. No, who are you? Who are you? Where are you going, my dear? Let's just be a little longer, so don't you please so don't so won't you please wait for me? That hurts. It really hurts. I was shaking hysterically and tears were streaming down my face. I was, I was absolutely convinced that this is where I was going to die. Let go of me! Sachi. I could offer no resistance. She was too strong. All I could do was plead with her. Stop, please. You're really hurting me. 
I felt like my arm would snap in two at any moment. Let's be together forever. She wasn't she wasn't just grabbing, but twisting as well. The pain was unlike anything I ever experienced before. I couldn't think about anything else. My mind was absorbed by the unconscious by the unconsciousable agony. Unconsciousable. That's not even the word. That wasn't even the word, was it? I just completely made that word up. Shido. I thought my arm was about to snap off, and then all of a sudden I was whisked away. Whisked away by by by, by Sukasa. Are you okay? What? Sukasa. The time to explain. We have to run. What? Sukasa was still holding on to me tightly after saving me from the brink of death. He held me back into. He led me back into the school at an incredible speed. Damn it! What the hell was that thing? Please tell me I. Uh, please tell me I'm just dreaming. He practically spat these words as he continued running. Why is Sukasa here? I tried to match his gait. His gait. Gait. Whatever. I tried to match his gait, and once we were a bit more in sync, I looked up at his face. After we reached the end of the hallway, he suddenly veered into the last classroom before the stairwell, pulling me within him. Shishido, you okay? I'm fine. I can walk by myself, really. Oh, sorry, my bad. I moved away from Tsukasa and almost immediately spill spilled onto the ground like a house of cards. Whoa. You sure don't seem to be doing okay to me. Maybe not, but I just need a few minutes. Hey, don't push yourself. I don't push myself. You're gonna die here. Tsukasa grabbed my arm to help me up. Unfortunately, it was the arm that she had been twisting. Oh, sorry. It's your arm that's hurting you, then. Yeah, I don't know how bad it is, but it really stings. Like it's on fire. I draped my other hand over the sore spot, where I assumed there was probably one hell of a bruise. I started rubbing gently, but it didn't help at all. That's not good. We should get you to the nurse's office right away. Then and I'll take care of it. But then we'll be exposing ourselves to that ghost again, right? Yep. Just thinking about going back to there and facing Yoshi made me shudder. I couldn't believe he was even entertaining the idea. Don't worry. Even if she does come get us, I'll keep you safe no matter what, okay? Tsukasa. Tsukasa's gentle reassurance actually made me forget the pain in my arm for a moment. I had to stop myself from, from blushing or trying to. At any rate. We need to treat your injuries as quick as possible or they could get worse. The nurse may the nurse may not be in, but I can at least apply first aid. Okay. Alright then, let's go. Tsukasa offered me his hand, and I graciously took it, squeezing it tightly as it led me back into the hallway. Tsukasa's hand, so warm. Despite the fact that nothing had really changed, I was still in I was still in just as much danger as I had been. Paralyzing fear had been feeling. I've been feeling gotten worse. If it were just me, I would have would have never been able to do this. I would have frozen up. But with Sakasa leading the way, I feel like I can do anything. Shido, are you gonna be okay if we run? Sure. With my blessing, Sakasa upped his pace significantly. Please don't let her show up. I prayed silently for soothed sailing as I followed Sakasa's lead. As long as he was with me, I think I'd be okay. Gentle, I gently squeezed his hand again, and as if to reassure myself that he was still with me. I was starting to think maybe Yoshi was gone. Maybe we thwarted her. But of course, just as I was thinking that, she made her presence known again. What the hell was that? Show yourself! An unearthly voice reverberating through the dark corridor. I immediately drew myself to Sakasa's back. Bring me more. Or Sukasa's shoulder, I saw the same shadow-like spirit from before. It must have been waiting here to ambush us. It's all right. Stay calm. But the ghost was moaning and waving bef and wavering before us. We'd never be able to get past it. You'll do anything for me. Hey, Shishido. Yeah. I'm gonna draw that thing's attention while it's distracted. I want you to run. What? No way. We run together. I've got a secret weapon. You what? It's a keepsake charm my grandmother gave me when I when I pointed it at the thing earlier. It definitely had an effect. A charm? Yeah. But Tsukasa, you'll still be putting yourself in harm's way, right? Eh, I'll be fine. It'll work out somehow or another. 
That's not. Stay where you are. We really didn't have time to argue. It was closing fast. And as it did, I noticed the superior's figure had become more defined. She was a tall young woman with a head with her head turned sideways at a 90 degree angle. The tale of Yoshi suggested she fell down the flight of stairs, so she broke so a broken neck would certainly fit it. Go, run. You gave me back you gave my back a shove to get me started, and with no no time to eject, I've unconsciously obliged. Tsukasa ran too, darting ahead of me for a few short moments. Hey, ghost lady, over here! Tsukasa! Tsukasa ran as close as he, could po as he possibly could to get Yoshi's attention and turned tail and began sprinting off in the opposite direction. Come get me, you monster! Amazingly, it worked. The spirit began chasing Tsukasa, leaving me completely obstructed. Unobstructed. This doesn't feel right. Should I really escape without him? I was torn. On one hand, I knew it was my best chance, but I couldn't help worrying what would happen to Sakasa if his charm f if his charm failed. I stopped for a moment and glanced over my shoulder. He was still running. Shadowy figure was still in hot pursuit. Sakasa, she, <laughs> Sakasa, she's way too close. You need to take out your charm. It's fine. I told you to keep going. Once you're out of harm's way, I'll be right behind you. I promise. I still can't believe I fell for it. I still can't believe I fell for it, but this was right about when I realized the truth. Tsukasa had no protective charm. He just had he just made that up so I wouldn't object too strongly to him serving as a decoy while I got away. No, I can't let him go through with this. Oh, you can't let him go through with this. I fucking can. I'd be like, damn. What a good job, man. I stopped in my tracks and shot it out at the top of my lungs. Yoshi, hold it right there. I wasn't sure exactly what I was getting myself into, but I had to do something, and calling the spirit's name definitely seemed to have an effect. That's right, I know your name. Shishido, what are you doing? All at once, the black figure was facing me. Though I never saw her turn around, she was flying towards me now, ignoring Tsukasa. I'm not scared, I'm not scared, I'm not scared. I repeated this like a, like a mantra, and stuck one hand into my pocket, grasping tightly onto, onto the one and only item I stashed there. So you know who I am, then. Unlike him, I have a real protective charm. Tsukasa's care, uh, Tsukasa's care his, efforts, his efforts, his beliefs, they were all packed into this pencil. And when you get right down to it, that's what a charm is, right? I squeezed the nubbing I squeezed the nubby little thing in my pocket, mentally prepared myself for the confrontation ahead. Confrontation I impulsively initiated. Shido, you have to run. I won't. Absolutely will not. God, please protect me. I closed my eyes, lifted my hand from my pocket, and brandished Sukasa's pencil intentionally. Or in indentally, whatever the fuck. The gauntlet had been thrown. I was putting a lot of faith into this, and I really, really hope I hadn't made, a mis hadn't made a mistake in doing so. My name is Yui Shishido, and my goal is to become a teacher here at this school. Huh? I opened my eyes to find that the shadow spirit Yoshi had stopped dead in her tracks. Did it work? Was it cause this pencil keeping a vengeful soul at bay? I don't need a replacement. Just die. Suddenly, I was whisked off my feet and slammed against the ceiling. Shishido! I could see him down below. He was staring He was staring up at me and desperately leaping. He was trying to catch me, I suppose, even though he knew he'd never reach. Tsukasa. I called that to him, over and over again in my mind. If he could get away, if he could survive this ordeal, then it would have all been worth it. Yoshi was drawing near and I was helplessly pinned to the ceiling. I had no chance at all. There was no doubt in my mind that my life was over. I clung to the relief that f I clung to the relief I felt at Tsukasa's safety. It was the only thing keeping me from losing my head entirely. Then all at once, the situation took a complete 180. It was like a miracle. Yoshi Sasaki, stop right there. Uh, Shisaki, my bad, Shinozaki. 
Before I had any idea what was happening, I found myself bathed in a gentle light. The woman from this morning? I'm sorry I wasn't able to protect you, but now at least the evil spirit will spread no further. It was the old woman who had collapsed in front of my house. She was standing down below me, enveloped in a warmth glow. A black shadow lunged towards her, then there was a horrific noise and the old woman was gone. Shishido! And just like that, I fell to the ground. Whatever Yoshi had done to me, the old woman must have nullified it. That must have been why she came to me this morning, and she... And why she came, why she come again now? I felt like I was gonna, I was going to faint. Tsukasa ran to my side and gently scooped, uh, gently scooped me off, <laughs> scooped me off the ground into his arms. Yoshi's spirit was gone. She vanished along with the light around us now. The only sound was the pitter patter of raindrops on the school roof. Hey, Shishido, Shishido, Tsukasa. I suffered quite a bump on the head from the fall and was and was decidedly disoriented. Disoriented, but I still had enough sense to pull my arms around Sakasa's neck. You idiot! Did I tell you to run away? I'm sorry. I just I wanted to protect you. I couldn't bear the thought of losing you. That's what I wanted to say. But instead, I just passed out in his arms. I felt as though I was waking from a long, horrible dream. Hey, you okay? Uh, Shishido? Where are we? Man, how hard a fall was that? Where's the nurse's office? Can you tell? The nurse's office? It occurred to me, it occurred to me that I look at my surroundings, probably something I should have done before asking about them. But in my defense, I was out cold. Beige walls, paint curtains, white beds with solid blue covers. This was indeed the school's infirmary, no doubt about it. Why are you... The better question is, why are you here? I thought you passed out on the ground out there, so I carried you in. Out where, exactly? Jeez, did you get a, con get a concussion or something? It was right by the school gate. The school gate? That's where you found me? Uh-huh. Ring any bells? But I was trapped inside the school and running from Yoshi, wasn't I? On that... Oh, that... That's right, my arm. It's probably broken. Wait, my arm's okay? Huh? Your arm? Was it a dream? No, it couldn't have been. I mean, it really hurt. I really thought I was... I was gonna die. Well, you're still a little out of sorts. I'm glad you're safe at any rate. I guess you could say I had a gut feeling, maybe. I just got concerned and stopped by your house, and your mom told me you went back to school. So I came to find you, and well... I can find you, and well, I found you. Tsukasa. Um... Yes, yes, there'll be time to thank me su- Time to thank me and such later on. Right now, there's something I gotta do, so hang on a sec. Okay. Where are you going, Tsukasa? I wanted to ask you about Yoshi. Ah, Shishido. Glad to see you're awake. Ma'am? You gave us both quite a scare. Mikune, uh, Mikune was pale as a ghost when you came when you came to get me. Lucky for you, I was working late tonight. I'm so sorry I have trouble you. It's fine, of course. But you know, you were really mourning you were really moaning in your sleep. Were you having nightmares? Nightmares? It seemed like you were... Minako was worried sick about you. So it really was just a nightmare then. Maybe the scary story this afternoon was just too much for me. Are you feeling a little better now at least? Yeah. That's good. Then I smiled cheerfully and, dis and disappeared behind the partition curtains. The partition... what? Partitioning curtains. Yeah, that's the word. Letting out a sigh, I laid myself down on the bed once more. It was dead silent. The rain must have let up. The only sound I heard was occasional call from the nurse, who was otherwise going out, going out her business, uh, going about her business quietly. Oh wait, what about the pen case? I thrust my hands into my pocket, not really expecting to find it, but there it is. The pen case, complete with Sukasa's pencil talisman, inside, 
Uh, what's the Kazus Pencil's talisman inside? Was present and accounted for. Which meant that I made it to the I made it to my classroom. Maybe it wasn't a dream after all. Hey. Huh? Oh, Sukasa, welcome back. It was still I was still trying to remember exact uh remember exact details about what happened when I unexpectedly felt something cold rest against my cheek. What are you? You were sleeping pretty restlessly, you know? And sweating sweating an awful lot, so I figured you might be thirsty. Here. It's that coffee you like so much. Thank you. Sukasa went out of his way to buy this just for me. It was a lovely gesture. How could I possibly refuse? Hey, isn't... Hey, isn't tomorrow? Or I guess, isn't today now? But either... Uh, either way. Don't you have an interest exam to take? What, what time does it start? At nine? So in four hours, then. God, I don't even want to think about that right now. After the day I just had. I've been put through hell on earth. Taking a test was the furthest thing from my mind. I was in tears, and I had no idea why. Maybe it was because I was so relieved, so glad to be alive. Okay. Hey, Shishido, can you stand? Huh? The timing's just right, so I'm gonna show you something good. Something good? Yeah, or rather, it's something I really want you to see, if you're up for it. Sure, I guess. My nose are still running. My nose is still running, but my heart was felt a lot lighter. I had no longer felt threatened by the school. I was comfortable and safe. The two of us left the nurse's office with Tsukasa in, in, in the lead. And even though I was holding a cold coffee in my hands, I still felt warm all over. E neither of us said a thing as he led me through the empty halls. It occurred to me that when we last saw one another, I was mad at him. Look, Shishido, we're here. What is... what? Isn't it just a hallway between the buildings? Just wait, you'll see it in a minute. See what? I had no idea what I was looking for. I just kept staring at him, but his eyes were fixed on the window leading out into the walkway. As I gazed upon him in profile, I felt my heart skip a beat. I have to apologize for what happened yesterday, but I just wasn't sure what to say. I let my feelings get the better of me, and I reprimanded him for a behavior that was, at least at the time, entirely reasonable. There was one, there was one, uh, there was more to it than that, though. There was one particular reason, more than any other, that made it hard for me to think about what the words to say were. He and I had run from Yoshi together. We escaped her raft against the immeasurable odds. And what if, and what if that wasn't all just a dream? Bingo! Here we go. Huh? I felt Sakasa's pointed finger and... Whoa, that's beautiful. What an absolutely stunning sunrise. It's actually the sunset I enjoy watching most from here, but the sunrise is pretty great too. It's gorgeous. The whole town is painted orange. Hmm. Looks like you're back in good spirits again. This is the place that you were talking about, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is. You've been keeping this spot from me all this time. So why now? Why are you showing it to me today? No reason, really. No reason, huh? I can think of a reason, but I didn't say anything. It just seemed like a far-fetched. It just seemed kind of far-fetched to me. And if I were misinterpret, if I were misinterpreting him, I'd be very embarrassed. Couldn't possibly. Could he? My face felt kind of warm. I placed the sweaty cat. I spe uh, I placed the sweaty coffee can on my cheek and sighed softly. You feel okay? Your face is really red. What? I is is it? You aren't still feeling faint, are you? No, no, nothing like that. It's just yeah, it's the sun. It's just the way the light's playing off this off my skin. That's all. Okay. Boys can be dense sometimes. Good luck on the exam, by the way. If you head back now and get ready, you should still be able to make it. Thank you. That's what I liked about you, Sukasa. Huh? Also, I'm sorry. For what? Well, I should say yesterday things might have seemed a little awkward between us after after talking about that school legend, remember? Oh yeah, I think I remember something like that. 
What do you mean, something like that? I was really bothered by it, you know? You girls obsess over the littlest things sometimes. Me? I didn't think anything of it. Really? I let out another sigh and turned back towards the morning sun. Stretched my arms skyward as a sudden wave of exhaustion overcame me. The day got brighter bit by bit, and I just stood there, silently trying to piece together all the jumbled thoughts rattling around my head. It was running away from Yoshi, Mr. Castle was, was with me, when I was saved by that old woman. It really was just a dream, huh? As the bright rays of the sun washed over me, I felt new life and new hope welling from within, and I finally came to terms with those horrid events. Most likely, I got the pin case without incident, but then, on my way back, something hit my head, knocked me out. That would be just my luck. Oh, hey, Shishida, don't move. Huh? Stay right there, just like that. I didn't know what he was planning to do, but he was staring right at me. Felt kind of like he was staring into my soul. And then... What? So Lee Tsukasa drew his face towards mine. Is... Is he... Shishida? No way. Is he really gonna... I shut my eyes. I was ready for this. Or maybe I just didn't want to look. But the next sensation I felt was quite the one, was qu wasn't quite the one I was expecting. Shishido, what happened to you? Huh? He grabbed my arm for a second. He grabbed my arm for some reason. He was staring down at it intently. What the hell? What is he doing? Whoa, what is that? Seriously, I had no idea what that was there. Turns out he was just concerned by the strange bruise I've, I had apparently received which had momentarily became visible when I raised my arms. It was right around my elbow, right where Yoshi had grabbed me in my dream. Looks like it hurts. It doesn't hurt at all, actually, but... But what? Never mind, it's nothing. Giving a wry smile, I gently pulled my arm from his grasp. Hey, Tsukasa? Yeah? Before we go home, I have a favor to ask you. What is it? Would you mind if we held hands? Held hands? Yeah, just a little bit. Or is that asking too much? When we, a when he asked why I wanted to do this, I fed him my own lie. I just told him no reason. We only joined fingertips, but for the rest of the time, it really felt like I was connected to another person's heart. I remember feeling so happy. Hey, Miss Yui. Miss Yui? Tsukasa. Miss Yui, please. Hmm? I knew I heard that voice before, but who was it? Was I just dreaming again? I still felt like I was holding Tsukasa's hand, though. Miss Yui, your hand! Your hand! What? Good, you're awake. Uh, what? Mochita? That's right, it's Satoshi Mochita. Huh? I was still dazed, I had no idea what was going on. All I knew was that one of my students, Satoshi Mochita, was here and he looked concerned. Monsieur, your hand is... Oh, oh my! I didn't realize what he was talking about. I was holding Mochita's hand in my... <laughs> I was holding Mochita's hand in my own and squeezing it awfully tightly. Excuse me. Please, I'm so sorry. It's no problem. Though I have to say, you have a really strong grip. A really strong grip, Miss Yui. Do I now? In the past, I was renowned far. I was renowned far and wide for being weak and dainty, young beauty. You know. How exactly do I respond to that? Well, you could say something nice. Machida was a good student. He and I get along well. We were already falling back into our usual pattern of good nature. Of good nature ribbing, except... Wait a minute. Why are you here? Well, that's... I told you earlier, didn't I? I guess I shouldn't be surprised you don't remember anything. What? Am I supposed... What am I supposed to remember exactly? A little while ago, you ate some porridge I made and took medicine before passing out again. I told you everything then. You did? 
Have you seriously forgotten all that? Completely. Don't laugh. We should aside and point it at the table. Class notes from Mr. Yamazaki. Wait, did you come all this way just to deliver those? Yep. When I did, you were in a pretty bad way. So I made you some porridge. Oh, but don't worry, I had permission. Mana said I could borrow your kitchen. Heh, <laughs> Mana did, didn't he? I stroked Monin's neck and I laid down I laid down contently on my futon. Such a pretty kitty. I was getting kind of, I was getting kind of wrapped up in petting him, so I, as I often did. I almost forgot Mochito was here until he let out a huge sigh. Also, Miss Yui, leave your front door unlocked is really dangerous. Oh, was it open? Yeah, you're lucky I was the one to discover that. You really need to be more careful. Duly noted. Thanks. Did I say something funny? No, you just sound like my mother. Yikes, I don't think I like the implications there. I didn't mean to laugh. Must have, must have seemed kind of, must have seemed kind of deranged. But I could always blame it on a fever. Wachito looked at me and let out another sigh. My poor sense of humor must have been getting to him. Well, you sure seem a lot better now than you were when I got here. So that's something. Hmm. I feel better, too. You slept like a rock, Miss Yui. That's right. I woke up this morning feeling dazed and chilled. I called it sick. I called it sick, put out food for Monet, and I don't remember a thing after that. Oh, you don't remember going to the convenience store? The convenience store? Yeah, I found the cold packs and snacks like... Let's see. Here. Look, the time on the receipt, it was this morning. Wow, you're right. How can you possibly not remember going to the store? <laughs> Amazing. That's just... Seriously, you need to pull yourself together. You didn't go out... You didn't go on your pajamas or anything, did you? Well, I don't think I did. I wouldn't be surprised. Don't try and hide behind laughter. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Were you taking care of me this whole time, Uchida? Uh-huh. Wow, I'm really sorry you had to stay this late. It was already past 10 o'clock in the evening. I couldn't believe Mochita had been with me this whole time. I felt both guilty and grateful, and I definitely gained a new respect for him. There's still a little porridge left, if you get hungry. Thanks. And I brought this too. Alright. Give me a moment, guys. I will be right back. I have to use the bathroom.
I have returned. I have to use the bathroom real quick. Okay, let's see. Where were we? Ah, uh, and I bought these two. What the fuck? You went to the supermarket? There wasn't anything in the fridge when I checked, so I figure I might as well. Huh. The bag was quite heavy. Inside, there was a bottle of orange juice, some bananas, canned peaches, apples, and other assorted fruits. That's... Vitamins. When you're sick, as you... When you're as sick as you were, your body needs all the help it can get to fight back. Think of it like medicine. Well, cheetah. That much fruit couldn't have come cheap, especially for a high schooler. I consider offering to pay him, but decided against it. I knew he wouldn't take my money, and besides, I really appreciated the fact that he'd gone all this all through all this trouble for me. I returned the favor another time. If it ever seemed like he was going to he was going to be staying late after school, maybe I'd buy him dinner. Or I could help him with preparations for a school festival. Well, it's getting late, and I should go. Oh, will you be okay? Do you know your way back? If you like, I can take you at least part of the way. It's fine. Just go back to sleep, Miss Yui. You're not bothered just yet. You're not better just yet. And besides, it isn't safe for a woman to walk alone at night. Aw, oh, you're such a sweetie. Seeing how much you care just makes my heart skip a beat. No, it doesn't now. I'm not sure you should be saying something like that to me, Miss Yui. Huh? Why not? Machida and I joke like this a lot. Usually, it made him blush and get adorably embarrassed. But not today. Today, he just grinned sheepishly with a mischievous glint in his eyes. I didn't quite get it. <laughs> what was his angle? Who's Sukasa, Miss Yui? Is he your boyfriend? Huh? How do you... You kept calling his name in your sleep. Sukasa, Sukasa, he cried. Lost, lost in some sort of wonderful dream. What? So who is he? That crafty Mochita had turned the tables on me, and now embarrassing to know what I've... Fears that I know that I've been calling Sukasa's name. Well, I hesitated to answer for a moment, but then figured, what the hell, why not? Sukasa was my first love. Oh. Judging by your actions earlier, you must have seriously been head over heels for him. What? Why? Well, when I got here, you thought I was Sukasa. It was unbelievable. W wait, what are you saying? <laughs> Miss Yui, your face is beat red. That's just my fever, I swear. Well, that's fine. I'll let you believe whatever you want to believe. Oh, come on. Whatever happens to respecting your elders? You shouldn't mess with adults. Heh, <laughs> but you're in... But you're in the rare form today. We never get to see you like this. I wasn't sure he was ever going to give me a full story of all the embarrassing things I had, I had done in my fevered days. And maybe it was better he didn't. Either way, I was, his debt. I was in his debt. So he could tease me all he wanted, just this once. Oh crap. I have to get going. Yuka's going to be really angry with me. Thanks for everything. It's dark out. <laughs> Thanks for everything. It's dark out. So please be careful on your way home. No worries. Miss Yui, you be sure to eat right and get better ASAP, you hear me? Of course. I'll kick this in no time. Fight, fight the good fight. Thanks. What a good kid, that Mochita. I better be careful, though. He is my student, after all. Oh, come here, Monit. You sleep with Mommy tonight. I miss you, Sukasa. Huh. Chronicles of Past Events. So... Tap the four Purgatory. Yeah, there's no way... Oh my god, there's no way we can, uh... There's no way we're definitely doing another chapter after that. Oh, I got a... I got a fucking achievement. Fever Dream. Nice. We definitely don't have enough time to do another chapter after that. <laughs> Even though I would really like to. Um, so after all that, what I got from it was that I guess even before the events of the first corpse party, Miss Yui was fucking, um, she was branded already. Not, 
not in the sense of death, but she was she was definitely injured. So she's been through a loop before. They made that very apparent to show the bruise on her arm, which never got better. Either that or maybe it went away and it's recently like getting darker. I don't know. It's weird though. That's interesting. So Okay, so Seiko died in the first one, right? Then we have Mayu, she died in the second one. Third one, teacher, the teacher died in the first game, I believe, right? She, she sacrificed herself. Huh. Damn. That sucks, because I really do like the teacher. She's cool. Alright, well, let's check these bonuses out. Oh, you know what? Before I check out the bonuses, I have to have to head over to um, options because because I, I found it kind of weird having the voices having the voices play as I'm reading it like if it was something like you know if it was something like conception or uh, or like ding and romper or something where like it's playing out in English I would just let the characters talk for the most part you know right um I guess I'll, I guess I can put it at like 50. No, I'll put it, I'll put it at like 70 so we can hear it. Cause I actually do want to, I do want to um, hear the, hear like those extras that the voice actors have, you know? So we've got new ones, right? I guess it's in the testimonies, right? Yep. We have, we got Yuka, Mochita, and, um, Teacher. I guess, uh, we can start with Yuka since we really didn't see her at all. Right? I'm just checking, that's all we got. Oh, I also got this one. Wait. Wait, wait, hold up. Who do we have beforehand? I should have really checked. This one is definitely new. So we unlocked three. I'm guessing it's the teacher and... Should be Shido, right? I'm trying to think. Oh, that's Mayu. Okay. I couldn't tell the difference. I'm sorry. So that's my. That's the voice actor for Mayu. This is Seiko. We listened to this one and I guess we unlocked these three. お疲れ様です。どうも。持ち出さとし役下手の ということで、え、今回ですね、あの、ま、僕はですね、あの、そういうのは<笑> 本当に怖い印象があったりとかしますけれどもね、え、結構僕もファンレターでいろいろとあの、本当に怖くてですね、え、まずオープニングを見た段階でもう電源を消しましたっていう人もいたぐらい本当にえ、怖いものになっていますけ
が出てきたりとかそういうふうなことに関してですねまあ,あのちょっと触れていたりだとかまあどなたでもお気軽にやっていただける話になっていたんじゃないかなって思うんですけれどもねでもおそらくこれゲームクリアしないと出てこないとかそういうふうなことですよねきっとね,ねなのであのこれを聞いている方はね頑張ったんじゃないかなはいね怖がりながら頑張った人もいればもうすごく楽しみで頑張った人もいたんじゃないかなと思いますなのでまあどちらも含めて本当によく頑張った偉かったぞなんだそれはということでえまあねあのまだえ1回しかプレイしてないという方もきっといるのではないかなと思いますのでえそういう方はですね本当何度も何度も遊べると思いますので何度も何度も遊んでいただけたらなと思いますそして怖い人はちょっと1周目やってああ怖かったなって思った人はですね友達と一緒にプレイしてみてはいかがでしょうかということで、えー、今回はこの辺でまたお会いできるのかなどうなんだろうなねえ本当に僕としてはまだまだ続いてもらいたいのですがということで、えー、僕も楽しみにしておりますので皆さんも楽しみにしててくださいということで持田聡役の下野ひろでしたバイバイ That was really nice. I like that one. That one was definitely longer than,、uh, than other ones. That's cool. But I definitely, definitely understand what he's saying. They do a. Like, I, I make fun of the writing for this shit because they go into. I swear, it's like they're. Like, the detail they go into this shit, it's like they're writing fucking porn or something. Right? Even for, like, all the horrible shit that will happen. Like, the words they use as descriptors and stuff. But, um. It's really a. I really I understand what he's saying. Like, even. Even I was getting a little. Even I was kind of getting a little tensed up reading the, um. Reading, uh. You know. Reading Miss Yui hiding in the hiding in the classroom and the ghost coming after me and stuff like that. This is why I don't have face cam because I'm not. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm not easily scared, but I am easily. Uh, easily, like. uneased, right? So. <laughs> so that whole time I'm like. Like, just. Like, playing earlier in Mayu's part, like, the fucking. Like, it actually did get me when, like, the ghost jumped out in front of me on my fucking screen, even though this is a goddamn visual novel. I just didn't expect it, right? So even reading Miss Yui's part. Like, now that I was expecting that, I'm like, oh, are they gonna try and jump scare me again? I didn't. That really got me the first time. <laughs> so it was a little tense, not gonna lie. Um. And it's nice we get to hear the characters' voices, you know? Like to hear their、uh, take on it. Look at all these fucking characters. Oh my god, damn god. Hi, eh, domo, oskai sama des. Eh, tsukasa yak no okamoto no beko des. いやー収録今終わったところなんですけれどもあれですね司さくんがですねめっちゃかっこよくてですねいやー爽やかなイケメンですごいんですよこれぜひあの,<笑>あの好きになってくださいと言わんばかりのですねあの僕の思いがこう演技に含まれていたら嬉しいんですけどもそうですねこんなにイケメンなんですけどまさかですねあのまあ、怖い恐怖体験もですね収録中に疑似体験できてですねいやー台本をですねもらった時にもう普通に読んじゃいましてですねめっちゃ怖いんですよねあれあの人が某あの人が人じ,だん人じゃないんですよね化け物が怖いんですよ司さくんが言うには倍司さくんで化け物なんですけどあのー、いやよくですねあのまあ、今回も死に方たくさんあるんですけど言っていいのかわかんないですけどあのー、よく軽道院さんはこんなにすごい死に方を考えられるなと本当に感動してしまいますねあの僕自身ですね結構ホラー作品というものは好きででしてあのー、そうですねショッキングシーンなんかも結構割と体勢がある方なんですけど文字面を読んでてですねあの夜中に昨日読んでいてあのす
すごい背中がゾッとしました<笑>そうですねしかもゾッとする時に限ってこう家がですねニシッといったりするのがですねその気配とかを感じるのがですねとても怖い次第でございますはいあのコープスパーティーあのー、またですね司さくんやれる機会あればいいなとか思いつつですねそれはぜひ皆さんの応援によってできると思うのでぜひ僕にもう一回司さくんをやる、えー、機会をくださいませ皆さん、はい、本当に収録楽しかったです、えー、お疲れ様でした OK That was nice. It's great that I finally get to hear his voice. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming some of these voice actors are the same voice actors from the original game. Because they. Because I guess when they re released that, they added voices to it. Because it was originally an RPG Maker type thing. But. um, Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure if they're the same voice actors. But it's nice to hear what Tsukasa's voice actor sounds like, right? I can, I can imagine that very chill, very laid back. Uh, I like Tsukasa. I do like Tsukasa as a character. He's pretty cool. But I guess. How, how do I say this without coming like an asshole? I guess even someone who could be like new to writing can kind of see there's a little bit of fault of his inclusion in here. Not because it's bad or not because it's. Not because, um. Not because he's unlikable or anything. He's a great character. But. Because he's kind of just there when you think about it. Like, at the end of the day, unless, unless somehow later down the road there's more to his character、uh, in this game, maybe in future, like, I'm pretty sure in future installments, they'll probably, he might make a comeback or something. He, he'll be like around the same age as,、uh, as the teacher. But、um, he's kind of just there, right? Like, like you get more. You get more build up for,、uh, for the teacher rather than him. And I, I guess it's supposed to be that way. Like, you're not supposed to know too much about him. But at the same time, when it's all said and done, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to get the same connection that,、uh, well, maybe not the same exact connection, but you know, how am I supposed to feel like. Super bad for him, or anything like that, right? There hasn't been enough time to to like establish his character to where if he was to die, like in that final confrontation, if he was to die, I probably I would just go, Oh no, Sukasa, no! But it's not like I wouldn't sit there and be like, No, why'd you have to kill him? He was cool, right? Like, I need more. There's definitely need to be more in his character, and I'm assuming that there will be probably, um, maybe in the future or something, but. He should, as of right now, he's just kind of there, right? Like, I, I'm trying to. Like, it was just pretty much it was pretty much the、uh, Miss Yui show the whole time, and it's supposed to be that way, but, you know, he just doesn't have enough to be. For me to be. to care that intently about him. It's kind of like Mayu in the first game, right? In the first game, Mayu, Mayu's like getting. getting dragged out by the spirits and stuff, and you want to save her. Because you want to save her because she's,、uh, she's friends with、uh, Kishi, Kishinuma and fucking、um, and Ayaka, I think. I think that's her name, right? The other one? Ayaka?、Uh, it's been a while. She's friends with those two, right? And they seem to really care about her. She's the one moving away and stuff like that. She wished them all farewell. That's cool. But like, you don't want her to die because, like, no, that's my friend. I'm supposed to care. But she really didn't have enough character, right? There wasn't enough there. Same thing with the guy wearing the. I forgot his fucking name already, but the dude who wears glasses. Like, when he. I guess he goes insane and the darkening gets him. But when that happens, it's like. You're like, oh man, that's fucked up. But at the same time, you don't really. You don't really feel that much because you're like, A, he was super fucking creepy. And like, you don't know if he's like well in the head or not. The answer is he's probably not. He's probably not well in the head. But. It's like. I, I don't know, man. Like, you didn't feel too bad for him. Like, even his, even his quote unquote death, I guess, in the first game was a side note. It's like, and then he just left and died. It's like, okay. Maybe there's more in the extras and stuff. I still haven't played the extras in the first game. Um, so I definitely want to do that. Also, what his voice actor was saying for、uh, Tsukasa, 
his voice actor was saying there's very there's a presence in the room when they're recording the stuff, right? That you can kind of feel you were there. Like I, I definitely got some of that feeling in the first game, right? Not as much as I would like to. I'm pretty sure they stepped up their game in this game. So once I'm done with this playthrough, I'm probably gonna replay this game again just so I can hear everything voiced, because I really wanna I really wanna see that performance, right? Because earlier when we had it, there was a lot of there was a lot of good voice acting. Not gonna lie. The only reason I took the voices away because I found it kind of distracting that I'm reading stuff out while the characters are speaking in Japanese. If they were speaking in English, I would probably be quiet for the most part, which is not a let's player friendly thing to do. But you know, it's the game. I rather show off the game rather than me, right? With that said, let's see what Miss Yui is because she definitely started the show. I want. I definitely want to know more about this character in the uh, in the first game. The fact that they, like, even the fact in the first game that you got to play as Miss Yui a little bit added more to her death than with Mayu in the first game. Right? Now, this time when Mayu died, it added way more to her death. I am playing this at the dead of night. え、私はちょっととても こう、なんとも言えない学校の匂いを感じながら、え、久しぶりにやるのがとっても楽しかったです。え、今度はですね、もうちょっと怖くないので、え、また学校の話、え、携われたらいいなと思います。ありがとうございました。That was very short. That was nice. I thought that would be like a little bit longer. Oh my god, so to so does she have like a really long one. Holy shit. But um Yeah, definitely. Uh I really, I really do like, honestly, so far, if I have to say, like, Mayu would be my least favorite. I only played three chapters, right? That and the epilogue. Actually, how many chapters? Are, yeah, three chapters. So, Mayu would be my least favorite. Not to say that it's bad, but it's just my least favorite, even though it has, even though it has Mr. VIP over here, best character ever. Um, <clears throat> and that's only because, like, when you're playing it, when you're playing it, you're like, it's only because when I'm playing it, it's after the fact that you know what happens with Seiko, and you're just waiting for the inevitable to happen, like she's gonna die. Uh, my second favorite at this point will definitely have to be uh, with um, Seiko and Naomi, because that's just, <laughs> you know, you originally play and you're like, I want to see what happened if that played out differently. And then everything, like, like that moment where, like, Seiko just loses it, right? Also, got the, com got the confirmation that she's a lesbian, finally, thank you. <laughs> like, it was pretty obvious, but still, it's like, I just want you to fucking say it, right? Um, but, like, <laughs> you get that moment where she loses her shit, right? Because Naomi's the one who tries to kill her, but Naomi doesn't remember. And then... She starts running down the steps, and instantly where she starts running down the steps, like, even in the recording, you can see me. Uh, well, not see me. I don't do face cam. You can hear me just go, oh, no, don't go down the steps. She's gonna, oh, no, she's gonna get cut. No. <laughs> and then, and then you just hear the thud, and then you go down there, and you see Naomi just holding her head in her hands. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Damn it. No. Right? Because, because there was a lot there. Unlike, unlike Tsukasa... There's already a lot established with Seiko, and you're like, I kind of do want to save her. Especially with the ending of the first game, right? Like, that was really good. Um, 
and right now, Miss Yui has to be my favorite because A, I wanted to know more about the character, and B, it has more of a like classical vibe to it, right? Instead of being whisked away into like a different dimension and shit like that, it's like it's like you came to school, creepy shit happened, you almost died, you did die. Um <laughs> You know, creepy shit happened, and then at the end of it, they pull like a fucking Wizard of Oz, like, I had a dream, and you were there, and you were there, right? But this time, instead of, I had a dream, okay, it's like, I had a dream, and you're branded. <laughs> and you're branded. Your fate has been sealed. Also, also, I wish, I wish they, uh, I wish there was, <sighs> the one downside of it, besides, like, Tsukasa not having enough characterization, um, the downside of that one was, uh, I wish they just explained the old lady shit a little bit more. Not like the fact that she comes and comes and like warns her. The fact that she comes and save her, because when, because when I died, they were describing the features of the old lady as if the old lady was killing me, right? Because later on she says that you know, uh. That uh, Yoshi Shinozaki had uh, had like different features, and then at the end they're like, "The old lady spirit is here to save you," and I'm like, "You sure? Cause she killed me before, right? Unless they're doing the thing with like um, like they did in the first game where like some ghosts have like moments of clarity and stuff like that, and the rest of them just kind of go go into like madness or whatever. But at the same time. Why would the old lady spirit be there if she wasn't dead at the school, right? She obviously has to have some sort of connection to the school or something like that. Like, I would like to hear more about that one. Also, she definitely said about, like, the stuff being a school setting and stuff. Like, I guess at, you know, I guess at this point we kind of make the joke that every time I play a fucking scary game, I'm always in, like, a school or some shit. But, um... <laughs> can't wait for Outlast, huh? <laughs> but, uh... Outlast 2 to be more preferable, because that one's in a school, right? Sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but I definitely understand the thing, like I said it before in other streams, where like I do nighttime shifts. I definitely understand the thing of heading to an area that is usually full of people, and being alone in it, and hearing every single noise, and every footstep. Like, even when the lights are on, it's pretty fucking creepy, because you're like, because you're just walking around, and you're, you kind of get in your own head, you're like, what if I just walked around that corner and, like, a dude in a mask was just, like, standing there? That'd be fucked up, right? Like, you just lose it. So, definitely understand, like, the settings and stuff like that. It's like, you head to an area that's supposed to be populated, but it's not, and it's so fucking weird and it's scary because it's out of the norm, right? It's the unknown. It's like, what happened? <laughs> what happened and what is going to happen, right? But, those are nice. That's going to be it for today's stream. I was hoping that I was hoping that the chapter would be a little bit shorter. I'm actually surprised we didn't <clears throat> I was waiting the whole time like will she be whisked away into a different dimension? I guess technically she was. But next time we head to Book of Shadows, we're going to be reading through Purgatory. If that one's not too long, then we'll just do Shangri-La after that. And then you know work our way down. Uh and that should be that. So, I'm having, I'm having a lot of fun with this, you know? I'm getting really interested into this. I'm invested. And I want to see how the story plays out for all the characters and stuff like that. But, with that said, next stream, uh, we're going to go back to Clannad, right? Hopefully this time when I play Clannad, I don't forget to, uh turn off the delay on my voice because I didn't do that last stream so there's a little bit of a there's like a half second delay in me reading lines and stuff um but I'm gonna go back to Clannad that game is that game is weird <laughs> that game is weird it's not super weird but it's like kind of weird because they have a main character in that game that I thought they would like shoving your face but honestly they're shoving every character in my face besides what I would assume to be the main character they want you to go, uh, they want you to go get with. But, um, also during Clannad, there's something, 
There's something I'm going to have to talk about during Clannad because I found out something about Clannad and I have no idea how I'm going to let's play that game now. So with that said, I want to say thank you to everybody who came to the stream, watching it live, watching the VODs, watching it on YouTube, whatever have you. Um, you know, all, I'm tired of saying fucking subscribe and follow and all that. I really don't want to do it. I don't like it. I, I feel dirty when I say it. So, <laughs> talk dirty to me. So, uh, thank you guys for watching, right? I appreciate it. Just coming down, just looking at it, watching the VODs or YouTube or whatever you do. Um... Uh, I have a Twitter. I say things on Twitter sometimes. If you want to follow me there, you can do that. I'm going to try and see about opening a Discord or something like that. So I can have, like, more time to hang out with people. Build, like, a community that people can go to. Instead of just having the stream and the YouTube. But, uh, other than that, that's pretty much it for tonight. I don't think I have any other announcements or anything like that. Uh, and... Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a good time. I don't think... Because one of the nights got pushed over. I don't think that Corpse Party is going to be streamed again this week. I don't think I have a slot for it, even though I really want to. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But, um... I would... I really just want... I want to move on with Corpse Party, right? It's hard for me not to play this game by myself. Um... But yeah, so I'm going to stop talking now. That's it. Once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care.